What is love? Baby, don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. No more. Boy, I'm really happy you guys convinced me to go on this long road trip and miss work just so I could listen to this song on loop play for the last three fucking hours. Don't look at me. We're driving Leo's car again. This thing's a fucking... a nightmare. It's made by Honda. See, I really don't get why he will go and say, hey, let's all go on a trip when he's fucking sleeping in the back. That kosher deli we stopped at earlier really made him tired. Yeah, it must have. So foot long sub. I really have no idea where we're going because since we're driving his car, all of his GPS is in Japanese. I really have no idea where the heck we're going. In hindsight, if we're driving a Japanese car, I thought they were like famous for having like great audio systems. And this song has been playing for the past ten hours. I really don't get it. I think he just has it on loop play in a CD, and he just refuses to eject the CD. I don't even see an eject button. Everything's in Japanese. I don't either. And it keeps yelling at me every time I look at it. Konnichiwa! Whoa! Whoa! See, I told you, this thing's like a death trap on wheels. I thought I'd get a really high crash safety rating. That's the whole thing that Leo keeps talking about, is how safe his fucking cars are. Probably for skinny people, but not for fat people. Look at this thing, it's like a fucking shoebox. Well, if we get hit on your side, at least I'll have a really strong airbag to my right side. Oh, thanks a lot. Th- th- thanks for thinking really highly of me. <laughs> You're welcome. You're my best Man, friend. this map I got from my grandfather is like... I think the land's changed a lot since I've he's even used this. This the map. continental times? Yeah, I think it has. I guess so. But Jesus, man, I thought we'd be there by now. Holy fuck, Leo keeps farting. Man, he really smells. Jesus, I guess eating kosher is bad for you. I, I, I've been still hungry. I had like three crumb cakes or whatever the hell they served me. Oh, you know, it's like, like croutons on a plate with a glass of water. I'm still starving. Well, that's your fault. You wouldn't eat anything. They had salads there. I was going to eat a salad, which is fine, but I could pay $17 for a fucking kosher salad. Ugh. God, I wish we'd get there already. God damn it, I fucking hate this song. I used to love it, now I fucking want to kill myself. That's it, I'm changing the fucking radio station. Something, even off, would be preferable. Die, you goddamn piece of shit. Konnichiwa, committing seppuku in three, two, one. What just happened? I think the car just committed suicide. I think it got stuck here in the song too. I guess uh, even Japanese cars have their limits. All right, let me see if I can crank it back over. Come on, you piece of shit! Fucking start! Come on! Why do we always take Leo's car? Haven't we learned from the last time? Yeah, we were in the fucking cabin in the woods. Yeah. Leo, wake up! Your fucking car's broke. God, fucking car! Duh. Fuck it. Work, you piece of shit. Work. Stupid fucking bullshit. What? We could have took your car. All right, you know what? Fuck it. it. Fuck it. We're done. Fuck we're it. walking. Screw it. I'm done. Fuck this piece of shit. Next time, we're taking an American car or like a German car. Those cars never fucking break down. God, I still can't believe the fucking car broke down again. God damn it, Leo. What the fuck is going on? Seriously. Don't you ever service your shit? God damn it. You know, I don't know. I don't know what's going on with Leo. He's just... It's like his voice box ain't even working. He's just walking like a zombie. He barely got out of the car. We had to pick him up and grab him to throw him out of the car. Do you call that walking? He's like... (laughs) I guess him dra- dragging his right ankle on the ground is no big deal. But well, seriously, where are we going to go? Our uh, phones don't work. I don't know. Let's just find a campsite. Like, let's just make one for tonight, and then we'll fucking deal with it tomorrow morning when it's bright out. Campsite with what? We don't have any camp wood. Uh, I guess there's trees around there's, us. So we don't have a li- li- We're in a forest. There's wood everywhere. We don't have a lighter. Yeah, we do. I've, I made a torch out of Leo's upholstery and oil from the engine. And I used a cigarette lighter to light it. I really told you that was a bad idea to set his car on fire. Well, we were, it had to stay warm. It's not too cold out. But I figured, you know, it killed itself. Done deal. We put it out of its misery. It's 86 degrees. We don't need a fucking fire right now. Seriously, yeah, we do. we're not going to dive hypothermia out here. I know, but we need to keep away all the Sasquatches and the weird, like, Mandingos and uh, Jersey Devils. And what about those alien abductions? I heard they're pretty uh, pretty common around these neck of the woods. You believe in alien abductions? I watch Nat Geo all the time. Of course I do. Yeah. I, 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 it's kind of silly to think that you're the only people in the universe. 
Well, it is silly, but it's also really stupid and naive. I forgot my alien abduction kit at my house, my fanny pack. I, I kind of left that. I carry my uh, honorary FBI Fox Mulder badge wherever I go. Way to go, Steve. You fucking jinxed us. What the fuck is going on? Where's that music coming from? I don't know, but it's creepy as shit, and I don't like X-Files music in the dark. I hear someone walking in the woods over there. You hear that? Come out! I have a torch! And a... And a car on fire! <laughs> <laughs> and a car on fire over here! Don't make me use them! Hello, I'm Max Boulder. And I'm Sharon Gully. We're FBI agents! I don't know what we're doing out here. You dragged me out here to look for UFOs. What the fuck? Who the fuck are you people? I'm Max Boulder. Yeah, I know who the fuck you are. Why are you out here in the middle of nowhere walking up to our campsite that's on fire? We're FBI agents. I'm Max Boulder. Man, Jesus oh my God, Christ. These guys are fucking retarded. My God. They... Dude, I think they've been smoking weed. Look at them, they smell. Their eyes are bloodshot. They've been eating those mushrooms off the trees. It's hey, well, a bad thing. What was that one dude from the X-Files? What was his name? Fox Mulder? Fox Mulder. Who the fuck is this guy, Boulder? I want to see your some credentials or something like that. I don't believe you're from FBI. Well, ah, here's my cousin. I'm Max Boulder. Oh, my, my fucking God. We're not going to get anywhere with these people. I, we're FBI agents. Fuck. I wish there was aliens here already. Holy fuck, you see that in the sky? You see that? Oh, god damn it. Fuck you, fuck you, fuck. We're FBI agents. We're here to see aliens. Sharon Gully. Run, Steve, run. She just got fucking vaporized. Holy shit. Oh my god, what the Where are we gonna go? Run. Run, just run, motherfucker, run! Why is there light on us? Oh, shit, Whoa, no. I'm picking up off the ground. Where oh, am I going? I'm Where floating. am I going? That's amazing. I'm like 400 pounds. <laughs> Where are we going? We're going oh, up. Oh, man. Where is that? Nate, Nate, are you awake? Nate. Nate, wake up. Uh, what the fuck? You hear that noise? What What the fuck is that noise? It's worse than the fucking song, What is Love? I don't know, I've been away for like five minutes, I already shit myself, I don't know what's going on. Why am I floating, and naked? What is that strap to your thigh? It's a billy club, in case of emergencies. Well, your hands are tied up, how are you going to use it? I think this is, is calling for an emergency right now. Well, let me see if I can swing it loose. You have to jiggle it a little bit. Any luck? Yeah, let me see if I can try to swing it towards that control plant over there and try to get bust this loose. Almost. All right, we're free. Where, where's Leo at? I, I thought I heard someone scream or someone moan. I, it sounded like Leo, but I, I was, really wasn't sure. It was coming from the, that room over there with all the blue lights. All right, let's go find out where Leo's at. This place is fucking creeping me out. And that fucking junkyard music is killing me. What the fuck is going on here? Are those aliens? They look weird. Human, we want to know more about your cultures and video games. Okay, uh... That's a strange request. Yeah, um... Uh, I don't even know how to respond to that. You got, you guys have spaceship technology and able to lift my fat ass off the ground, but yet you don't have video games? You zap that one agent down on the ground. And yes, like what Nate said... You guys don't have a radio or something? We have a vast knowledge of the working universe, but yet our parents won't let us build our own video game systems. And where's our friend, Leo? What happened to him? He is in one of our vast many anal pleasure rooms. Hold on, did you say anal? Yes. Don't you guys assault anything above the waist? Tell us more. About your video gaming culture. Well, what do you want to know? I mean, this is a really strange request. You picked us up off the ground in the middle of fucking nowhere. Tell us more, or you will join your friend Leo in the anal torture room. Wait okay, a minute, I okay, think it's a yeah, pleasure yeah, room. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. Um, uh, Nate, Nate, uh, where do they go? You can find all of our podcasts at EverydayGamingSociety.com, as well as the EGS Productions iP- iTunes app. As well as Podkicker. 
You can also find our Facebook page, Everyday Gaming Society, and our YouTube channel, Everyday Gaming Society. Sounds interesting. When do we listen? Every Wednesday. You have helped us greatly. Now you may be granted one wish and one wish only. Oh, thank God. Uh, uh, let's, let's get back on the ground. Put us back where, where you guys picked us up at. I want to get the fuck off of this shit. Fuck that. I want to go see the universe. Let's go find alien hot bitches and have cool sex. Fuck yourself. All right, just put me down then. He can stay up here. You can have fun with him. He's a big boy. No, no. He, he's coming with us. We're going to go find the Orion slave girls. No, no. Three-breasted hookers. Nate, total recall. I, I want to go back down Come the ground. Come on! Where's your sense of living? I have a card payment for crying out loud. Who cares? We're in space. What's going on, everybody? It What's is. up, you guys? It's me, Nate. It is Steve. And welcome to Podcast 85. With EGS Productions. I'm Steve, like I said. And who are you? Uh, I'm Nate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. What what a great intro. And you brought up a great point. It only took us 40 some odd minutes to do that one instead of like two fucking hours. We're getting better at this. <laughs> we are getting much better. I think the, the biggest thing... Earlier in the day, I got a hold of you and asked if there was anything that I should uh, start to collaborate music for and just like get stuff ready. I think that was like the biggest uh, plus that I could have uh, done. Well, I had a better one, but Leo uh, skipped out on us again. Yeah, Leo was supposed to be here, oh boy, at about 7.45 this morning, so I'm fucking waiting around until like 8 in the morning, still no word from him. And then he says, oh yeah, yeah, I'm not going to be coming out today. Can we do it tomorrow? Uh, Nope. Told you three times, man. Can't do it tomorrow. So, well, Leo did not die this week. <laughs> <laughs> That's a positive thing. No, nope. other things happened to Leo, but he did not die. So, uh, I guess we are getting better by treating our our employees here, or as our like, should we call him our, an employee or a friend? What should we call him at this point? Eh, he's a friend. <laughs> he's a friend. <laughs> he's just a friend. I swear. Just a friend. So, so, what do you have going on in your world, Nate? Before we jump into video games, anything fun and interesting? Oh, it's fucking cold outside. Nope. Hey, my fucking heater broke in my car the other day. How fucking great is that, right? Oh, well, it's gonna be fun. You know, negative degree weather, freezing your butt off. Oh yeah, yeah. You have no idea. So much fun. It is fucking unbelievable. But it's about- sad that Michigan's colder than actually Alaska. <laughs> Isn't well? I guess not now, but what? Like two weeks ago, Michigan was colder than fucking the surface temperature on mars is that fucking crazy really it was only tw- negative 20 degrees and it got down to what a couple weeks ago it was negative 26 or 27 with 35 one- 35 oh, okay well there you go so yeah yeah isn't that fucking great so and yet we still can't get to mars <laughs> and hey we could you ask to mars we can probably uh live on mars we're fucking used to it by now my god oh good lord we got the super bowl coming up Chris, boo, uh, sports boo. Yeah, yeah. Well, what was Chris bitching about on Twitter about his team? Was he going for the Patriots or the Seahawks? I think the Patriots. Okay. Well, I'm going for the Patriots too, so I, I won't rip on Chris too bad for going for the Patriots. Do you have uh, any idea who you're going to go for? I don't know. I don't watch sports. <laughs> you don't even know who's in the Super Bowl. Like, the, I, I told you the teams already, but no, no, nothing. <laughs> nope, nothing. Don't care. It'll just be another work day for me. I'm going to have a, a, week. a party at my house if you want to come over. A party? Yeah. With girls and stuff? Probably my girlfriend. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that would so, be totally fun for me. So, like, 15 <laughs> dudes and one chick. It's going to be <laughs> awesome. <laughs> that would be totally fun for me. Yeah, sure, I'll come over to the Sausage Fest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is so cool. I'll have my weight machine there. We can, you know, like, work out in commercials and, like, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Because working out is our strong point here. Anyway, so what's, what the fuck's going on? I mean, come on. Let's lay up this podcast. Holy fucking shit. It's only 2.40 in the morning. It's like a fucking funeral home in here. I know. It's so depressing. I actually moved a bunch of boxes and stuff around, but maybe the boxes were keeping us warm because now it is fucking freezing in this room. Yes, because the cardboard boxes totally added the insulation <laughs> level in here. It did. It's, it fully fucking did. Uh, if you guys want to, please visit... Our podcast on the iTunes page, EGS Productions Podcast, and you can go through. Please star rate us and please leave us a review for every review and every star rating you do. We'll donate two comic books to the Children's Hospital. And another thing is please visit the St. Jude's Mission Hospital. I guess it's St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital. And you know their mission statement is really cut and clear, just pretty much cutting down to the point of no bills for the parents as uh, you know their kids are sick and whatnot so that is our charity donation 
for this month, and this is the last time you guys will hear that. We're gonna have a uh, next donation by uh, next podcast. Yeah, just just go out there and donate. It's all for the kids. It's all for the parents. You know, what I mean, it sucks being sick and having to pay tons of medical bills, especially in today's health care thing that's going on right now. Um, just take care of the kids. You know, what I mean, it's kids should not be worrying about sickness, ill ills or bi- or bills. You know, what I mean, they should be just busy being kids. You know what I mean? They should enjoy themselves. Having fun, relaxing, play video games, going outside, just not sitting down with tubes coming out of every orifice of their body. But let's not get down on the podcast. That, that was fucking, that was gruesome <laughs> and depressing Christ, right, right there. Right. Jesus. All right. Fucking Christ. Let's go to video games before we go down any more dark, disturbing <laughs> paths. Yeah. All right. So, so anyway, what do you got for the first article? So still waiting for St- South Park Stick of Truth to be released. Well, you'll be not alone. Millions of fans around the world still sit and wait while Ubisoft works out the kinks that apparently THQ had no problem with. (laughs) Delays have pushed it beyond its original intent release date, and rest assured, Obsidian will be turning the project around and putting it out soon. That's what they say. Soon, in quotations. But development did not begin at Obsidian, though. South Park creators Matt Stone and Trey Parker originally started the project at South Park Digital Studios as their own game engine and could create an authentic... (laughs) <laughs> recreate the authentic crappiness <laughs> the show is famous for. Their 2D crappiness. Yep. Meanwhile, the show has gotten better. The animation is still simplistic and crappy, as they believe. Once they got uh, once they got into running, they took an, an experienced RPG developer in Obsidian Entertainment. South Park Studios has released a mini-documentary uh, following the development of the game, and designers have planned... Those fam- familiar with so- South Park's earliest video games can understand why Trey and Matt Stone have refused video game adaptations for their show until technology was able to catch up. Uh, the Nintendo 64 and PlayStation can only produce the crappy South Park games, not authentic crappy. Uh, <laughs> those games were just horrible. So, uh, basically, they're still saying that it's going to be out on March 4th of February. Or not February, but I'm so stupid. Anyway, <laughs> March, uh, March 4th, 4th of, of 2014. 2016. <laughs> uh, 2014, but uh, it has been pushed back over these past two years, so I'm not holding my breath on that release date. Okay. Have you heard about the whole Gears of War buyout? Who bought the rights? I actually have an article for that. Do you? Yes, I do. Let me find it. Uh, Microsoft uh, acquires Gears of War franchise, bringing back producer Ferguson to the game series he loves. Uh, Microsoft has announced that it's acquired the rights to the Gears of War series and brought uh, back Ferguson uh, from Mountain Mundane Games, thereby bringing back the largest, the biggest exclusive series in-house. In addition, the company is installing the former director in production for these last three games, Rod Ferguson, as studio's lead to be uh, led at Black Tusk Studios, the development house tasked with creating the next chapter. Gears of War has been a hugely successful franchise for Microsoft, grossing over $1 billion in its lifetime, even though it is almost exclusively available on the One Machine and Xbox 360. A PC version of the game was released, but none of these sequels made it onto a that platform. The fourth game in the franchise, though it was considered a disappointment in comparison to the heights reached by its predecessors, the prequel has not received as well critically, although it sold over millions of copies. It hasn't has been a big hit as Gears of War 3. Now Black Tusk and Ferguson have a chance to debut the franchise on Xbox One, as well as a re- reinvigorating it for the Xbox 360 as well. The studio returns after its stint as a producer on Bioshock Infinite, so it's interesting to see anytime soon what Gears of War will bring, being how they just got done working off the Bioshock Infinite game. Bioshock Infinite game? Well, that's where Ferguson was. Oh, well, yeah, where Ferguson was originally. Yeah, he, he was uh, he left the Gears of War franchise after 3, and he went to go work for uh, Black Tusk, which was the producing company that worked on the Bioshock Infinite game. It was uh, Microsoft Vancouver was originally, that's what it was called, that's over in, of course, Vancouver, Canada, but uh, that is now named Black Tusk. They're working on a game project exclusively for the Xbox One, but that's not release of the game project name or the, the release date, of course, and now they have Gears of War, but that is the only two games that they have right now that they're holding on to. Well, I think they're talking about the uh, Gears of War Judgment and uh, the prequel they did. Wasn't that Gears of War Judgment as well? 
Yeah, well, Judgment was the the prequel to Gears of War one. So, so yes, yeah, it, yeah, it, it wasn't that good. It sold honest. millions of copies, but it wasn't as like it wasn't a huge major AAA title release. No, no, not at all. If you guys don't know anything about Black Tusk, you, of course you can always do your own research. But um, here's a few little games that combine with everybody's resume that is now working on Black Tusk. It includes Splinter Cell Conviction, Warhammer Forty Thousand, Space Marine. Crisis 2, Deus Ex, Human Revolution, God of War 3, and Uncharted, Drake's Fortune, The Saboteur, and there's a few other titles in there as well that's like kind of the, the top titles. So those games, they're not that bad. They're, no, not at all. They're, they're pretty decent titles. They're standalones. They're saying that the concept that they're working on now, they're hoping to make the next Halo series or the next Halo franchise. So I guess they're going to be going for hopefully original concept, original ideas, like what Gears of War and Halo was when it first came out. For Gears of War, or are they planning on actually doing a spinoff of Halo? It's not going to be a spinoff. It's going to be their own thing, like how Bungie is now doing with Destiny. I think they're, they have to have their own game to oh, claim so, so their own. So they're going out and making a completely different title and different franchise. Yes. Yeah, they're, okay, they're going to okay. go through and make their own title. And like I said, hopefully so it's going to be original like, concept. Doesn't 343 Industries own the rights now to uh To Halo. Halo? Yes, they do. Yeah. It's like, uh, they might be in some trouble. <laughs> right? But anyway, according to the folks at Mahjong, they have confirmed that they've managed to sell over 1 million copies of Minecraft for PS3 console. Um, despite the fact it came out uh, in December 17th of last year with a price tag of $20 per unit. At uh, this point, we'll be moving along a million copies from retailers' hands of gamers themselves in a matter of five weeks or so, which is pretty impressive, but it still played in, uh, compa- failed in comparison to the version that sold over a million copies in a matter of five days once it hit Xbox Live. And you also bet your bottom dollar that it's not going to be the last. And additional versions of the game for the newer platforms are already in the pipeline. And you happen to know either that Sony PS4 or PS Vita, you could be sure that the those three consoles too will be on the receiving end of the very own, their very own version. So they're talking about making a version of Minecraft for PS4 and PS Vita as well as Xbox One. Um, Majana intends to milk Minecraft... <laughs> The Minecraft cow. You're fucking right, man. <laughs> I'll be doing the same Dude, thing. Dude, they, they, they've made bank off of that one game alone. You know how many copies that they now have for the iOS device where they have their own, of course, pocket edition, but now people are taking that pocket edition and adding more shit to it with the Minecraft engine, and they're reselling it. So they're reselling it for like 99 to 299 per game edition. Is They're just mini games with the Minecraft engine. That's all it is. And, of course, I'm sure whoever developed those games or might be getting a small fraction, but Mahjong's getting the majority of it. I don't know what the percentages would be, but it's just fucking crazy. All right, so $20. $20 right. Times $1 million. And that's just for one platform. That's six zeros, right? That would be $8 billion. $8 billion. Is it six zeros or... Six. For for a million, yeah. Six, and then what would be nine? Nine would be a billion. Yeah. Eight yeah. billion dollars. On just the PS, On just the PlayStation. PS3. And they've sold... They, they sold that amount on the Xbox in five days. And that's not including the physical copy uh, copies sold as well. Yeah, on the actual disc itself. And that's not even including the fucking... PC version, which I, I know is you know well, that's much more, more elaborate. And that's yeah, more of course, because but, there's more to do in the PC version than there is. But you gotta the, think if this this game it seems like it would come out for the Nintendo 64 because it's so blocky, it's so you know it, it, it seems like it's dated technology and how it is, but the mechanics and everything just fucking works. It, it just it's, does. It's just the game alone. You know, what I mean, it just spawns creativity. It's so and simple. And it just makes fun. people like want to play. It's like I thought it was stupid. And then I went and bought it on a whim because I had an extra twenty bucks to blow, and it's just like once you start, it's like a, it's like a drug. You don't even know you're playing. Hours will go by. Like I like I remember my first playing session. I I built for over five hours straight, and I looked at the clock and I go like, it's been that fucking long. I have to work in two hours. Yeah, Fuck basically, me. <laughs> it's like holy shit. Why the hell did I sit down here for so long? But the thing is, is like it's addicting. The next day, it's like you're craving playing Minecraft. It's like, oh, I could build this, I could do that, and then they had like the whole entire uh, duplication mod. You know what I mean? Until uh-huh. they fix that patch. You know, it's just 
You know, uh, and then creation creative mode came out, and it was just like uh, it opened up like a whirlwind of fucking insane building. Do whatever you want, which is fucking great. Although the fact that you and I have both bitched about this in the podcast previously, that all those fucking hours that we had, we just fucking lost like eighty fucking hours at least on just one level, one map is just gone that you can do in probably maybe ten because of creation mode. So you don't have to go out there and get your materials, build all that shit. Well, it's just it's just a great thing to do. You know, what I mean, it's it's a great thing to have a bunch of friends in there. You mess around, you blow each other up, you have fun, you, you just build stuff, and it's just like it's it's cool seeing two people. It's like we built that one world up in the sky, <laughs> up in the fucking sky, who poured and like lava it, it was like water. <laughs> half of it was part jungle, the other part was like modern Stonehenge, and like That's we had great. waterfalls coming out of it. And then like I went back later and I actually built a. Uh, a rail system that goes all the way up to the top, and it looks like it's Damn. just floating in midair. Now, is that cr- with creative mode? Yeah, it's with creative mode. Oh, okay. Like, I love creative mode. It's just, it makes it a lot easier, but, like, I also love the exploring aspect. You know I mean? Before creative mode came in, it's like, I dug tunnels for hours. Yeah. It's like, I remember, like, digging tunnels for three days straight and then showing you, it's like, what the fuck? You have no life. <laughs> it's like, and what have you this done is all you? I have. <laughs> this is what they're going to show up my funeral. It's like, he was a great Minecraft builder. He's going to have a Minecraft Steve head on your, on your head in your casket. <laughs> so Australia holds on. Theft reboot is old school as you want it to be. Um, Montreal, Eidos Montreal has gone on the defensive against fears that this new reboot of Thief will be forsaken as pure stealth elements and previous titles in the game and action set pieces linear and linearity. In combat this, uh, difficult settings of Thief are completely com- customizable. Players can select between four base settings ranging from Rogue Master, but each of these to Rogue to Master, sorry about that, but each of these could be further customized to arrive at a perfect setting. Um, I got to see some of the the video at uh, the VGX Awards. You know, I mean, like they did a full in depth story with uh, Elo Mon- Montreal, and the, it, it seemed really cool to me. You know, I mean, it, it had a cool feel of like Dishonored mixed with Bioshock, mixed with like Assassin's Creed almost. You know, what I mean, it was really cool. And there's a, another cool story that's coming out with this game as well. Um, a full pacifist run of Square Enix uh, upcoming theft reboot appears to be possible, according to the achievement list obtained by Xbox Achievements. Uh, warning, these have a lot of spoilers as well. So if you don't want to be spoiled, you might want to not listen. For Fa- now. Fast forward for uh, you know a few seconds or a yeah, few minutes. So the hundred gamer score achievement. Mortal Victory is awarded to players who complete the whole game without knocking out or killing any characters. Damn, so that's going to be a speed run through video that's going to be posted on YouTube. Yeah, so like 100 gamer score. Has any other game done 100 gamer score? Yeah, there's been a few games out there that have done it. I know, especially their earlier releases of uh, first Xbox 360 games were just fucking like 300 achievement gamer scores because there was only like six achievements on a fucking game no i mean this is just one achievement right i, I know that i'm saying there was like a 300 gamer score achievement just for one achievement on the early on games for the 360 because they didn't really understand the whole concept of achievements mm. so square enix has always maintained that it is possible to complete the new game without killing anybody although the confirmation in the game's achievement list will likely be released releasing news to serious fans Another achievement is awarded to players who manage to reach the final chapter of the game without using the focus ability. The full 1,000 gamer score is spread over 37 achievements, Fuck with that. many awards handed out for collecting items, finishing quests, and completing the game across all difficulties. For more info on Thief, uh, go to GameSpot and Dan Hiddler's recent played game and said it was talking about the series back in the Stealth Roots. So, this is scheduled to release February 28th on Xbox One, PlayStation 4, Xbox 360, and PlayStation 3, as well as PC. The game art director has said the PC version will be better than the Xbox One and PlayStation versions. Yeah, there's a lot more to do. Well, there's a lot more you could play with. Sure, of course. Um, Gaming engines are just fucking phenomenal for the PC, but we had this argument before that you have to update your fucking video card and everything that a new technology comes out. Let's do the math on this. Let's do the math on these achievements. Because according to this, it has... Um, you said 37 achievements? Yeah, 37 achievements, which is a 1,000 gamer score. Right. So there's going to be like a lot of 5 gamer score achievements, a lot of 10s, 
few 15s, probably a 25 or a 50 in there, maybe even a 75 for a high difficulty. Or they might even have some really stupid fucking achievements, which I hate this. They might have like a 7 gamer score and then a 3 gamer score. I fucking can't stand when yeah, games do that. A 37 achievement, so like it takes uh, like 10 uh, hundreds to get a 1,000. Mm-hmm. So you're looking at probably a crap little little ones. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so but, and one one hundred ga- gamer score one. So if if you're gonna go through and play it, let me ask you: when a game has, let's say, you beat the whole game on a mediocre difficulty, and you only get three hundred twenty five gamer score for being all the levels and not collecting anything, no nothing. That's like your bare bones done. And the rest of your achievements, you know, the rest of the, you know, 700 and some have multiplayer to where you have to get like level 50 or well, level I've already, 100. I've dealt with this. This is, this is uh, classic Lego syndrome all over again. Exactly. So does that ruin your gaming experience when, when you get like the second level unlocked and you get five gamer score for, for, for doing that shit? Regular gamers, no. That just means more uh, content and more playtime. But for people like us that actually do game guides and achievement walkthroughs, it takes fucking forever. It is like a goddamn nightmare pulling teeth to get achievements out of this because you have to play the game over and over again like a billion times. Right. But as far as like playability and like it, entertainment value, it's great for regular people. You know, what I mean, for us, it sucks worse, but that's that's our life. That's that's what we do. Right, and you know we're not ones that goes out and buys the game, so we don't own the game. We turn them back in to get another game to work on that you know you guys ask for or whatever well, we want to play. If, it, if it's a good game, I'll buy it. But the thing is, like I, I can't afford to go out and drop seventy dollars on a game. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's fucking brand new, man. Nine times out of ten, like you ask ninety percent of people, they're going to be gamers on a budget. They can't go out and drop seventy dollars for every new release. You know what I mean? So. It's not a bad thing, but it's a great thing for people that love lots and lots of playtime. I agree with you. I agree. I'm just not. I, I'm just not really uh, happy about how all that stuff works. And uh, you're talking about Square Enix, and let me go ahead and bring this up. Final Fantasy XIV PS4 Jack, release. That was my next article. <laughs> release date is finally <laughs> announced. Have you seen what it is all in collector edition? It's released for the PS4. Yes. So you're that Sony PlayStation owners. It's great, and um, you guys are going to be able to uh, beta test on February 22nd, but it's going to be launching in April. April but, 14th. But the great time is sitting down and looking at this picture. I'll post it in the cesspool for sure, but the collector's edition on this game, it comes with a lot of content. I can only imagine how much is it going to be. I'm not sure on a price, so don't hold me well, on that. This is some of the stuff you can get for the PS4 collector's edition of Final Fantasy. Right, that, that's what it's going to be for. Uh, Realm Reborn will receive a wind-up muggle uh, minion and a fat chocobo mount. No idea what the fuck that is. <laughs> Existing PC and PS3 Collector's Editions players will also receive these new in-game items for free, so there is no need to rush out and buy the PlayStation 4 and Collector's Edition unless you have been looking to, for a reason to buy the PS4 anyway. Uh, Final Fantasy, as well as the Realm Reborn Collector's Edition, will retail at seventy nine ninety nine. Oh, okay. And on PS4, while standing versions are priced at thirty nine ninety nine. After uh, the first thirty days, continue to play to require a monthly subscription to PSN for twelve ninety nine, just like the PS3 and PC versions as well. Uh, bring it on! I cannot wait to see what Oban is wiping out of the whole realm and his Eskin blah 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 blah. And it's also going to come with a security code, or token, excuse me. It's going to come with a few exclusive art cards. I'm not sure of the size. A huge fucking concept art book. The sounds of... Uh, I, I, I the sounds say. of Final Fantasy. Yeah, exactly. Lots the, of grunting the and of yelling Fantasy. and screaming and swordplay. And then six in-game items that is exclusive for the Collector's Edition. So there's a lot of shit that is going to be for that. Is it worth 80 bucks? If you're um, a hardcore Final Fantasy you're person? you're a hardcore Final Fantasy sure. person, yeah. Heck yeah, it's worth a lot. But it's eighty bucks is still a lot of money. Uh, it's I don't know. It's just not my cup of tea. Like I, I stopped playing Final Fantasy back in the day. We talked about this last week. Yeah. Um, and it's April fourteenth around the world. So that's going to be Australia, Japan, the UK, and of course the United States. So here's some deals for you PlayStation owners, uh, PlayStation Vita owners, and PlayStation Plus subscribers. We'll find Smart As has joined their instant game collections tomorrow on January 28th. 
according to the post on PlayStation Blog. Climax Studios and DevX, or XDev uh, Studio, European Collected Connections, of brain training and mini games, and is designed to foster the sense of community and competition. Neko Ercondono, assistant uh, producer of Sony and Santa Monica, has told us, told us, head of the game's release, check out the interview for our impressions of Smartass and its logic memory with word puzzles. 11 Final Fantasy titles for all extra discounts for those PS Plus. Uh, game... Games on sale include uh, PS uh, Classics Final Fantasy IX, Final Fantasy Origins, both who are normally $9.99 are on sale for $5.99 and $5.39 for PS Plus subscribers. You can also pick them up with more recent uh, Final Fantasy XIV, Realm of Reborn, and its standard collector's edition at discount and more. Head to the PlayStation blog and complete details for other sales. Uh, late last month, uh, Sony announced that Bioshock Infinite and Brothers of T- Two Sons and DMC Devil May Cry do not starve and would are <laughs> no, do not starve and starve would are receive across. The I cannot bird, read, bird, bird. but anyway, this happens every week for like three weeks now. <laughs> I can't read. I swear You'll to hit God, hit that block where you just become dyslexic in the, in the <laughs> middle of the podcast. Backwards of channeling Satan. <laughs> <laughs> it's like oh, I can't read. Oh, anyway, Lord. so those three titles were uh, free across the all platforms for PlayStation, uh, PlayStation Three, PlayStation Four, and this month for P- PS Plus subscribers. So do not, don't worry. Oh, they're calling it "Do Not Starve." So basically, they're they're doing this for people that are poor and like want to shell out money for games, but they want to eat at the same time. So, and so it's gaming on a budget. Yeah, basically. Yeah, which I is nice. That. That they is really realize nice. that we're all poor right now. <laughs> <laughs> Take pity on us and give us video games <laughs> yeah, to keep right? us entertained, and we'll keep our minds off our crappy lives. That's funny. Um, have you been on Steam recently? Um, I was on the other day. I downloaded a couple of games. I downloaded Dota Two. Oh, and, thank you. Uh, yeah, I downloaded that too. I also downloaded a couple indie games called uh, uh, Box Crate and uh, one other game. I cannot remember the name. Hold on. So anyway, um, I like indie games, so I thought I'd bring this article up. Makers of the League of Evil are working on a new game called Devious Dungeon. Uh, Ravenous Games and the geniuses behind the League of Evil series games is hard at work and with their noses to the grindstone getting everything ready for their upcoming uh, new game. As of yet, unreleased title is called Devious Dungeon and is going to be on a plat- be a platformer of sorts that carries the, the same retro pixelated style of Ravenous Games' previous works, which is already by us is right by us. The retro games are already pretty darn fun. If you have ever played League of Evil, then you might already know what some are what to expect for this new game, as a comp- complimentary is trying to build up a similar image. They want to reach new fans as well as older core group uh, of people that love League of Evil. So they shouldn't be expecting the game to stray too far from the original play style. Um, they do not give a release date, but uh, I'm looking forward to this game because I used to play League of Evil, and it was pretty fun. It's supposed to be out for Android devices. That was back when I actually had an Android before I switched over to Apple iPhone. I've only heard of it, never played it, because I never owned an Android. I went from a flip phone, track phone, to a slider thing, the LG Touch, and then to uh, the iPhone. So, <laughs> fucking great jump. But here's some more uh, steel deals for you. Bioshock Infinite on sale for $10 on PC and Mac, and $20 on PS3 through Amazon. Uh, PC and Mac versions of Bioshock Infinite are currently at discounted at $10 on Amazon, and $20 off the game's list price. Uh, the, list, the sales price applies to both digital and box versions of the game. Additionally, players can pick up the PS3 versions for $20 on retailer sites, of course, Bioshock Infinite is free for PlayStation Plus members on PS3 as well this month, so looking forward to check the game out at discount may be better off picking up a three-month subscription at the standard rate of seventeen ninety-nine. So, I don't know. It, Ten bucks is not that bad. You're still going to be spending twenty dollars either way with shipping and handling, right? But like they're saying, go ahead and pick up a three-month subscription at PlayStation Plus for seventeen ninety-nine. Yeah, of course. But 
it'd be better just to have a physical copy than a, a digital copy. Well, yeah, Especially but... Especially if you don't want to take up room on your hard drive. Everything's going digital now. Yeah, I know, but... That's the bad part. The thing is, you're going to you're gonna have that new subscription uh, plan that they're coming out with to rent games. You know, I mean, that's got to be downloaded onto your console, as well as all these free games that they're already having for digital download. Um, you might as well just go and pay, 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 blah, 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 pay the 20 bucks and get yourself a physical copy. That way you can pull it out whenever you want. You don't have to worry about sizing, sizing space on your hard drive and just play it. Most definitely. Do you know your Steam account? Um, right offhand? Yeah. I got it right here. I keep giving wrong information. <laughs> what do you mean? Like when you're signing in, you'll... No, like Leo asked me for it uh, because one of our listeners wanted to play with us. Right. And I gave him my old Steam account okay. name. And he said it hasn't been active in like years. And I go like, that's weird. And so hold on, give me a minute to pull up Steam here and I'll see if I can... If you want to add me... Mine is Steve underscore gaming. I currently play, of course, Steam Fortress 2, uh, Dota 2. I really want to play Rust. You know, Ryan was talking about Rust last week's podcast, and I did a lot of research on it, and it, it seems like it is just a really fun, playable version. But most of these great games that are out there, like Daisy, I cannot play because I'm on a fucking Mac. No, no, it sucks being on a Mac. Why don't you just boot camp? damn it. I don't want a PC. <laughs> Just boot camp your Mac. I'm not going to boot camp my Mac. You know how much shit I have on here right now and how hard that's going to be on it? an external hard drive. Yeah, I already have it filled with our shit. Yeah, get another one. <laughs> yeah. I have five, dude. <laughs> Welcome to the world of computers. You're going to have to have more Holy than one external fuck. hard drive. I know, I know. I'm just regretting the fact of spending another 150 bucks, you know, for a, a nice Western Digital. Yeah, my uh, Steam account is Nirvash Revolution. N-I-R-V-A-S-H. R E V O L U T I O N at Steam. And mine should be Steve underscore gaming. If not, then just go under Nate's and just find me. I, I'm going to be the only Steve on there probably. Go and add me. I'm pretty much on once a, once a day anyway to just check and uh, see if there's new cool updates or uh, new uh, fun little free stuff to play. I haven't found out what Leo's is. I know he texted us both wanting us to get on and play and all this shit. Well, I, keep, but... I kept giving him my account name, my old account name, okay. instead of my new one. Because um, I forgot the password and my email address for that one. Because I made that my Steam account, like, God, I want to say almost seven years ago. Oopsies. <laughs> Has Steam really been out for seven years? I think so. Pretty sure. Wow. Almost, so it, Almost seven years. It came out just a few years after the whole xbox revolution then correct because xbox has been out for no, steam's been around for a while you know what i mean i used to play uh, on steam engine uh back when we used to do, go to cc cyber cafe out in almont you know I mean? oh god i remember there was a cafe i never yeah. i never went to it Holy yeah fuck. like we used to go there all the time and uh we played day defeat source and uh far cry and all those cool little multiplayer games but yeah it's been around for a long time and i made an account there on Steam and paid for it, but I couldn't remember my email account. I don't even think I had that email account's active still, so I went out and made a new one. Okay. And uh, let's go ahead. I'm going to finish up with the only articles that I have left in video game. Titanfall Beta is finally announced, and it's going to be, of course, developed on the PC and Xbox One, where the beta is going to be taking place. If you guys want a release date, I will go ahead and post this article. You can check all that fun stuff out. And also quick little uh, tech information here and I guess kind of like specs on the Xbox One. 3.9 million Xbox One consoles were shipped in 2013 and if you guys remember correctly when it came out you know towards the final quarter 3.5 million were also shipped in that final quarter so you're talking a few hundred thousand that were shipped before that final quarter came into play. But I have a couple other articles as well. Um so we talked about mods and everything else like that for uh, Grand Theft Auto and how they run rampant. Well, Grand Theft Auto 5 PS3 mod puts Los Santos underwater. Uh, one PlayStation 3 owner has created a mod that sinks the city of Los Santos be beneath the waves in Grand Theft Auto 5. The clip and mod comes out from modder named Bushkin, and the tutorial of proof video came by way of YouTube channel owner uh, The Plague HD, which is the and P-A-A-Q-O-H-D. 
Uh, these kinds of silly mods is what I miss most about uh, Grand Theft Auto V and PC platforms yet. Once you're true in the massive world, the game is enough, and it gets fun to do completely absurd things that, you, that let you see the video game above. In GTA V, uh... Meh. Dyslexic coming in again? Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, basically, just go to the YouTube channel and you see what I'm talking about. I already watched the video earlier. But basically, it floods all of Los Santos. So you see, like, tops of buildings and stuff like that. That's but you cannot great. see the streets. So it looks like Los Santos is like Waterworld with fucking uh, Kevin Cosner. That is great, but the only downfall is what the fuck are you going to do? Jet skis. Cool boat stuff. That's so lame. Drive-by boatings. <laughs> But it is one of those mods where you can turn it off and get back to your regular version of the game. Um, I, I wouldn't say I don't recommend doing it just for the fact that maybe they can you know, turn it on and then not turn it back off. I don't know. I never really got into the modding community too much in the last couple of years. So anyway, according to Polygon, the next Battlefield 4 patch is coming early February. Thank God, we uh, need it. Battlefield 4 developer EA Dice is aiming to release the game's next patch in the end of this month, or early February, according to its studio, latest update on the Battlelog forums. Dice has noted that the timing might change, but its planning is releasing the patch for all versions of Battlefield 4 for PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4, Windows, 360, and Xbox One. The studio does not give specifics about the content of the patch, but it said it will be bringing out a variety of uh, stabilizing improvements, tweaks, and fixes. According to DICE's top issues tracker, the studio is developing is still attempting to solve more than half of the dozen issues with the game. In addition, DICE continues to ask for fan feedback regarding the po potential uh, balance tweaks. Uh, future patches will include other gameplay changes as well. So... Hopefully, n by the end of this month or early February, you guys will have a lot of more improvements uh, coming with that horrible game. That's not, It's not a horrible game. Don't let me get me wrong. It's just the bugs in the game. There's a lot of unreal. fucked up bugs that don't make sense. Like, I got to play a couple rounds or a couple uh, levels or stages, if you want to say. Are you talking um, about multiplayer or campaign? Campaign. Um, the peaking was kind of weird. You know I mean, and it didn't really feel right because you, you're against the thing and. You go to peak, but sometimes you wouldn't peak. You just step right out and get shot to death, and it doesn't like really register that you're trying to peak. So it's pretty much lagging that you were already past that pillar, and yeah. you're already okay. Pretty much, but uh, a couple other, uh, one more, a couple, couple more articles here. <clears throat> Whew, excuse me. Vita versions of Heskun Mickey. Uh, Project Diva F confirmed for March in North America. Sega has confirmed that the PS version of the hit. Volkrod, Rhythm of Hitsugumi Miku, uh, Project Diva F, will be coming to North America in March. Sega has only mentioned that the PlayStation Network release, however, it did not specify that there would be a retail version as well. The, v uh, the Vita version of uh, Project Diva F will completely stand-alone stand game against the, from the PS3 version, and will allow players to cross-platform games. So basically, if you have the PlayStation 3 version, you could play with Vita owners. Um, fittingly, across odds and ends, fitting. Dyslexic. I thought I'm the dyslexic one on the podcast. I don't know. <laughs> I guess we're switching roles. I can't read with a damn. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> but anyway, that's, that's pretty much the article. Like, it's a fun little game. It's it's a uh, it's kind of like those. Uh, how do I not make this sound creepy? Well, judging by our intros, it, I mean, really nothing should be it's any more like, creepier than it's our It's kind of like those dating sim games the Japanese people have. You know what I mean? It's No, I don't know what you mean. Dating sims, no. Well, like, they have, like, different scenarios. It's kind of like uh, what you would see in uh, Mass Effect, where you have different choices to the conversation. Okay, yeah, so and, it's like and, a role-playing game. Yeah, basically. All right. And different, out different uh, responses give you different outcomes. It's kind of like that. You know I mean, it... But uh, I don't know what the the story is behind Diva F, but I don't think it's going to be like dating sim quality where like oh Mitsuki kun or or uh, how's it going? Uh, I have no Oni -chan idea. or something like that. You know, it's like <laughs> weird like love interests and stuff like that. You know, it's really great how they have all that kind of stuff. And you brought this up months ago. How they would go through and they would have a. 
a service to where you can hang out with a female. Of course, not have sex with her, but you could hang out with her to cuddle bo- buddies. To, yeah, to boost your morale and you yeah. know, boost those endorphins. Yeah, you, you get to go and cuddle with a cute girl for like an hour or so for like yeah. three hundred bucks. So this is like com- <laughs> <laughs> <Jesus> <laughs> totally worth it, dude. We should totally go there. Like, I'll, I'll go there for the culture and learn more because I don't know a lot about the culture. I'd go there for their anime. I'd buy so much fucking anime and ship to the states, <laughs> and then like <laughs> customs I would... will fucking love you. Oh my god! <laughs> it's like, so are you trying to stick these? No, this is anime. It's not porn. <laughs> but anyway, it's like uh... <laughs> I'd totally go to those, that cuddle shop. Like, ugh, I'm just dreaming about it right now. <laughs> no, I would like to go there. I think that's on my bucket list for sure. I know Scotland is for sure. And maybe we can even stop over at Ireland and visit our old buddy Ben. Well, the thing is, Ireland's right next to the UK. So yeah, yeah like I mean, we could go to Ireland close. and then we could take a ferry across to the UK. We have a bunch of UK listeners. So everybody from the UK, what's going on? Yeah, we can go out there and say hi. And then we can go acro- tra- backpacking across Europe and then uh, go to a hostel and possibly have our kidneys and organs stolen. Okay, well, I don't mind going <laughs> backpacking. Could you really go backpacking, though, across Europe? <laughs> I'd get really ch- <laughs> chafed. <laughs> you would you would rent a moped or you would rent, like, one of those Segways. And, well, it's been, like, at least an hour into the podcast and Nate's finally cracking ass, so there's a little spray for you. What are you talking about? I've been farting all this time. You haven't noticed? I guess I haven't, no. Silent but deadly. <laughs> but anyway. Uh, so, Microsoft, something a lot like 1 vs. 100 coming soon to Xbox One. 1 vs. 100 is part of a massive interactive live trivia game show. Part of 360's video game may never return, but Microsoft has planned on bringing out something like it to Xbox One, according to Dave McCarthy, general manager of Lifestyle of Entertainment and Microsoft Studios. Um... Have you ever played this game, 1 vs. 100 in the 360 version? Yes, I have. I played it for a little while. Uh, I played it on someone else's account, so I don't have any achievements or nothing like that. It's a great social game. It's almost like Uno, how you can go through, you can have your camera, and you can have your picture, and you can talk with people that you're playing with. And it's a great trivia game. You can do it with all your friends. And if I remember correctly, they had first a TV show. Yeah, it was a TV And it, then they brought it, it into the It simulated off a TV show. It's not actually one versus a hundred. It's basically kind of like uh, celebrity squares, like they used to do back in the day. Hollywood squares. Yeah, like, do you trust the celebrity? Or do you trust the uh, the people in the audience? Right. You know what I mean, it's like, um, it's a great concept. I love yeah. it. So according to this, uh, during the beta test season of the show, more than one hundred and fourteen thousand people played the game on a live simulation sim- simultaneously. So the, the 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 beta tests are looking promising, and they're planning on bringing it out for Xbox One. Um, they do not know if they're going to bring it out for 360, though, or I, bring it back for 360. Yeah, I can't imagine they'll they bring it back anymore. for 360. You already have it, but I don't think the servers are even active anymore. I don't believe they're active either. That went down probably a good two years ago. I would want to say it yeah. has been up for a long time. I know that much. So that's pretty cool. And that's it for uh, gaming news for me. Are we going to be done? Oh, wait a minute. I got one more. One more. Sorry. Okay. I got one more. Sorry, guys. Ugh. So anyway, uh, Microsoft to unleash more of Xbox One's GPU power. Uh, Xbox One currently reserves 10% of its GPU power for Kinect and apps, but it looks like they sh- that could cu- soon, soon could end. According to the latest Scuttlebutt, Microsoft is dramatically reducing the amount of reserved GPU power in its gaming console. The Xbox One currently reserves 10% of its GPU power for connecting apps, like I said. But it looks like it could soon change according to the... Wow, this one repeats itself. But anyway, uh, <laughs> Pete Dodd is diving the driving force behind last year's PS4 No DRM campaign and reliable source for video game news on Sunday tweeted that Microsoft will keep 2% of its reserved GPU, GPU power for voice, but it will do away with 8% of currently reserved for Video Connect. This 8% will now be optional for games and developers. According to Dodd, presumably the game developer with titles that do not use Connect all will be only too happy to make use of this extra 8 GPU. Not bad. So that's pretty cool. It, it is, it's really cool. But what are your real thoughts on that, though? Well, it's, it's basically RAM. GPU power is basically RAM. Uh, basically enough to buffer and uh, make better graphics. Right. Um... They set aside ten for the connect and video and all that stuff, which is cool. But if you don't, you're not a connect person. 
You know what I mean? Don't you think you should get all the use of your new Xbox One you paid $500 for? You should, at least for the first... I would say for the first week or two, it might be a little iffy because of servers and everything coming out. But once you hit that point of, let's say, a full month in, you should have access to play just about everything that you bought that system for. Because, like you said, you brought up a good point. You pay $500, you're paying a lot of money, and you should be able to use every service, you should be able to use everything that they promised you. Because I know a lot of people that don't use Kinect. You know what I mean? I'm one of them. I'm not a Kinect person. Um, I like handheld controllers. Like, maybe one day when it's virtual reality and you have to use your whole body and stuff like that, maybe I'll lose some weight. But the thing is, I'm not going to (laughs) play... I'm, I'm, like, most people I know, it's like, they're going, like, I'll just throw my Kinect in the corner and never use it. You know, Shit, it's like now you don't me. even have I to have Connect. it plugged in anymore. You know what I mean? It's like you just turn that option off. I love Connect. So, well, it's great to bust out when you have tons of people over for parties and stuff, but when you're normally gaming, it's like, shouldn't you be able to like have that option of turning like the video option off? Because nine yeah, times out of ten, it's like you're actually going to like sit and talk with your friends through video on Connect. <laughs> if only they had. Look at me playing with myself. Oh, porn. Well, I don't know if I would really join your uh, video party if you're playing with yourself. <laughs> Well, you be the first time. But. It'd be like wild <laughs> horses, and I'd be like naked with something, my dick tucked in. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be like the opening. Let me. It'd be sli- like something from uh, Silence of the Lambs. Would you fuck me? I'd fuck me. <laughs> this reminds me of our opening of the podcast. Let me go swing my. Um, what'd you call it? A boomstick? What'd you call it? It's like what? It's it's a, a billy club. I keep it for emergencies. <laughs> <laughs> Let me swing it and hit that table. <laughs> Oh, God, that was so funny. Um, are we ready to go ahead and move into comic book news? Uh, sure, I don't really have anything for tech comic book news, though. I, I really got a, a few things that I've uh, had a chance to sit down and read. Uh, the Harley Quinn series is still taking off. It is really, really, really fucking good. I still love it. Um, you know, long story short, I'm not going to get through and talk all about it because I'm not going to spoil anything for you guys, but the way that the artists have portrayed with the rating is just is fucking amazing. It's like a side of Harley Quinn that we really have not seen. Have you had a chance to read the the number zero copies? No, I had? haven't yet. I've, it's been sitting next to my nightstand for the past like month now, and I haven't had time to crack it open or even had the gumption to do so. It's so, like last night I was debating whether to read it or not, but then I got hauled on to uh, Blizzard last night and play World of Warcraft. Oh, yeah. So I played that for like seven hours straight, Fuck, and man. now I'm a level 87. That's fucking crazy. Yeah, I'm trying to <laughs> trying to hit the 90 cap before the new uh, expansion comes out, but... How's that working for you? Well, I'm it tr- sucks dick, dude. Like, I wanted to smash my computer in half last night. I'm That's sure you got Matt with you helping you out and yeah, all that. Yeah, yeah, it's like we're questing together, but like p- the Pandaria uh, area where you're questing, it is so cluster-fucked. And so laggy, and, like, because Matt kept on ghosting out and shit like that, like, coming in and out of you, so it's, like, trying to follow him is, like, trying to, like I told him last night, it's, like, trying to follow you in this level, this area, is, like, trying to follow the Invisible Man in a rainstorm. Are you talking, like, in the towns itself? Because well, Pandaria, no, like, when I was on it last, the servers were okay. Was he on a huge mount or something? In Pandaria, like, the, uh... The higher level areas, like 85s, like you, oh, you never okay. got, you never yeah, got to like see, I, I never touched area. those, those higher up levels, no. <clears throat> but we got to this one area, and it was just like, lag, lag, disappear, lag, 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 lag. It's like, oh my god, I want to kill myself. And it's like, Matt goes like, okay, let's take a break, we're done for the night, we'll c- continue on another night. And I go like, thank you. It's either that or I was going to go fucking kill myself. Either one. <laughs> it's like... One of those were going to happen. Blood would Matt goes like, where are you? Are you lost again? It's like, dude, you <laughs> blinked out of my fucking screen and I cannot follow you. I follow the dot on the map where it says you're at and you're not fucking there. And you guys are probably in the chat typing to each other, yeah. right? Oh, of course. We're in yeah. the guild. Like, our guild just got increased to... Uh, I think it was level 18 last night, our guild. Are you guys still in the lazy as hell? Yeah, lazy as hell no guild. No shit. Yeah, that me and Matt wow. started like over seven years ago i'm actually in that guild yep i just haven't played it in a long ass time yep, um, you're lazy as hell <laughs> yeah i know right <laughs> you fit right in perfect for the fucking guild that we're in uh the black widow that is still a great comic <laughs> there's it's... one guild that always makes me laugh every time i see them it's like i don't know why but instead of like she gave me stds it says she gave me plagues <laughs> that's their <laughs> guild name <laughs> like a guild name makes oh me laugh God. every time i see it she gave me plagues <laughs> You know, that reminds me of, uh, you know, that like creativity when we were down in Texas and that we were at that uh, that trivia night. Mm. At, uh, what? It's no longer there. Is it called the highball? 
Yeah, the high ball. The yeah, the bowling alley slash bar. It's and, right next uh, to uh, the uh, Elmo Draft House. Elmo Draft House. And uh, our team name was what? Do you remember? Uh, Donuts Boil. Donuts Boil. <laughs> 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 so that was like the first thing that flashed in my head. Um, Invaders, that is now finally out. And it's although they call it the all new Invaders, it is still the old Invaders crew. You know, of course, you got Captain America. You got everybody from the old clan that uh, pretty much does nothing but beat up Nazis. And that's all they do in this comic book, too, is just beat the shit out of Nazis. Cool. So, you know, are they really going to uh, keep on doing that? I can only imagine how many comics. To, ca- to be honest, this. this the- no offense to video to comic book writers. You know what I mean? It's well, just... but, but real quick, how many comic books do you think is out there that Captain America has beat the shit out of Nazis in? Well, his first comic book was, it was, it was, was him it was about the war. Hitler. It was about the fucking war. His, that was his it. His first comic book was yeah. him punching Hitler in the face. I have number two of volume two, and it's a bunch of Nazi flags and symbols all over the fucking cover. But the, it's th- crazy. the thing is, like, we really need, like, I'm not, no, actually we don't, because that's a bad thing to say, but, like, we need another, like, super bad people to have a fight with like another world war because like don't you think nazis are getting kind of dated you know what i mean it's like uh, yeah but are we really gonna switch to let's just say for example the like, taliban we already do that in video games we beat the shit out of them in fucking video yeah, games how all the comic time books never did that exactly that's my point do the, do you think that they're not crossing that threshold of going into our current war because they're... I, I think it's them trying to take a a non-biased standpoint. You know what I mean? It's like, they're not against it. Like, but the thing is, they can't really say that because they did the, uh, the special, t- uh, when the t- Twin Towers came down, the, uh, Marvel and DC, did, they're both, uh, like, homage stories Yeah, to... they both got together and did, I, I really fucking love how they did that. Yeah, but the thing is, like, it, how can they go from that but they never followed up and did any comic books on, like, the war in Iraq and... And in Afghanistan. I'm sure there are comic books out there, and, you know, Mike and Gordon would be the ones to ask on this about any current running series or any series in uh, years past. But um, I really have no idea. Like, someone iconic like Captain America, why he's not fighting in that why, kind of why a war. Why did he punch Saddam Hussein in the face like he did Hitler or some shit? Exactly. Maybe there's just so much controversy when that came out. Back when it did, they just don't want to have that again. So they just stick on the same plot, the same story, and you know, just still going with it. I don't I, know. I have no idea either. It's kind of, it's I don't know. It's just kind of weird. You know, what I mean, it's like we, we'd have to ask like people at Marvel and DC like directly that question, but they'll probably never answer. They'll probably sidestep around the question. Oh, I'm sure. You know, they don't want to like have like a firm stance on anything. They don't want people to like go like, oh, they're fucking this type of person or they don't support our troops or something like that. You know what I mean? It's yeah. I mean, we can ask an individual artist or writer what they might say, but even if, if we were to ask Stegman, I, I believe that his comment might be taken the wrong way and he could lose his job over yeah. saying something like that. So uh, no one's going to be brave enough to come out in the limelight and say why. Exactly. So are we ready to jump into tech news? Cause that's it for comic books. Tech news, but I've got an awesome video game reference tech. Coming out right here. This is a man after my own heart. Probably Steve's as well. Is this so another he... uh, vending machine? No, no. <laughs> okay. Man braves fire to save Xbox console. Oh my god, is there a video? Uh, I believe there is. Uh, not on my phone, but you probably have to look up the article yourself to see if you can to find it. To save the Xbox One. It's done by Uber Gizmodo. Uh, the article is. Normally, whenever a house or place is on fire, the first thing is which we all supposed to do is run out from there without taking into any consideration our personal belongings. Right, get women and children, <laughs> all basic and essentials. But this guy, uh, hats off to this courage- the courageous firefighters and all of the world, the single darkest day in the world. A man in Kansas, however, displayed a different kind of brave bravado. He actually took the risk of running into his burning house just to rescue his Xbox console. Now, it's not mentioned as what kind of Xbox he grabbed, but the one thing's for sure, it cannot be the Xbox original that was released almost 10, de- ten years ago. Chances are it was probably one of the Xbox Ones. Um, which, all of his... <laughs> hold on. One also ought to take a note that the fire itself caused approximately $80,000 in damages. And um, miraculously, though, the man who made a dash for his Xbox, despite the running into a potentially fatal situation, suffered only smoke inhalation without having a long-term injury or burns. I find that funny. There's $80,000 in damage, but 
minus that 500. <laughs> well, he probably doesn't have homeowner's insurance, so he's not getting his, his oh Xbox my, back. That poor guy. At, at, least, well, he can, at, the at picture, least he can plug into... Looking the, at the house, the picture of the house, it looks like it's dump. So <laughs> it's probably like... He probably scraped every, every like single one of his pennies to get that, that game. Okay. Well, so I go into Uber Gizmodo and they have the article. I don't know if they'll have a video or not. They do not have a video. They just have, of course, the picture of the reference, and you can see all the firefighters barreling into this guy's house to hopefully save other electronics. But I, I guess you know nothing else was. Saved. That is that is a diehard fan. But anyway, Microsoft rebrands SkyDrive as yes. OneDrive after court battle. I heard about this. Microsoft SkyDrive cloud service will soon be known as OneDriver after Redmond lost a trademark case against UK's British SkyBroad casting group, B Sky B. We believe that the OneDrive name contra- convoys the value of what we deliver for you and best represents our vision of the, for the future, says Ryan, Ryan Gavin. General manner of consumer apps for serious voices. Yeah, after you just got your ass sued off in yeah, court. Yeah, after fucking court happened. <laughs> but the thing is, in July, Microsoft agreed to rebrand its Sky uh, Drive division following a decision by the English High Court, which found Raymond guilty of infringing on B Sky B's trademark. The tech giant initially planned to appeal, but reconsidered. The Sky Drive. Name dates back to 2007 when the Microsoft opened a beta test of Windows Live SkyDrive, previously known as Windows Live Folders. It launched next year, offering 5 gigabytes of free storage and later boosted to 7 gigs. Raymond has since introduced the service for Windows Phone, iOS, Android users, and standalone app for Xbox 360. A number of improvements were included in the Windows 8.1 version as well. This isn't Microsoft's first name change, though in 2012 it dropped the Metro title from Windows 8 due to the trademark challenge Germany based on Metro AG Hotmail last year, and also rolled into Outlook.com. So, if you go into their article uh, by PC Magazine, uh, they also have a video of the whole entire court case and basically the history of this court battle. Did they say how long the court battle went on for? Was uh, this a couple 2007. Of years? Yeah, so this so is a good couple of years right now. So well, they just officially lost. Yeah, so they just officially changed the name to uh, Open or OneDrive from SkyDrive. So it's been going on for almost uh, eight years. Almost eight years. Wonder if uh, Lucas Arts bought all, over those rights to uh, change it over to OneDrive. Well, the thing is, they. they I guess it wouldn't be a, Lucas. It's a, U- uh, it's a UK Disney. based. Company, uh, their the network company, uh, B Sky B, versus a American company, which is Microsoft. I mean, you're going to lose in the British courts. I don't, I don't care who you are. You know I mean, I, I guess I don't follow the British court system or law system over there. In, well, neither uh, do I. But the thing is, it's a British company versus an American company. You know, I mean, you're going to lose. Well, if they originally had the concept, then yes, you will lose. I mean, you're just pretty much plagiarizing someone else's work or taking out someone else's work, putting a different name on it. Or keeping the same name and just taking it for yourself. Long story short, they lost. So, hang in there, guys. We're going to go through a couple more uh, money people thingies. We're going to call ourselves, what was it? Apple CEO Tim Cook had some explaining to do over the missed iPhone sales estimates on G1 Call. Apple saw saw record iPhone sales in its fiscal first quarter earnings, but the number fell short of Wall Street expectations by the least 5 million. Six, a quarter- six million. It's 5 million. Six million. According to this, it's five at least five million. Well, according to this, it's least, six million. Least, not maximum, not maximum. So that means it could be more. But still, they profited thirteen point one billion dollars, but uh, total revenue was fifty seven point six. So all the shipping, the retailer, whatever it could be, they're still making a shit ton of money, regardless. Basically, some money is missing, and his ass is in hot water. Yeah. Do you think he's gonna get canned over it? Possibly. Someone's been funneling funds into their own personal bank account. I mean, yeah, I think. You make 15 point whatever billion dollars. Will you miss a point one or a point two? Or do you think he's taken a lot more than that? If he's keeping, let's say, a billion or a couple million for himself. Are you, will you be that greedy or will you just stick your hand in the pot and take like 20 grand here or 10 grand here? I wouldn't take any of it because it's not my money. 
And if you're a CEO, you get paid millions anyway, so why would you want well, to funnel the money? That was my, my final battle, is that he's getting paid a shit ton of money. He's probably making at least six figures. At least six figures, down in like $250,000 range. Yeah. What, what do you say, for one year? Pretty much, but the thing is, it's... it's who would want to do that? You know, what I mean, it's it could be it could be a uh, a bookkeeping mistake, or it could be that someone's pocketing the money. It, a, it's, a greedy fucking person. But that that all the reason why it's missing is because they opened up their new fiscal quarter in uh, China because China sold record producing sales of the iPhones because they just got delivered to China for the first time it's because the the government there has been releasing its strict bans and a lot of things, including the gaming consoles. Uh, and that was a humongous selling point. Like, I think it was over, I want to say, one billion phones were shipped to China and sold. That's probably why the Xbox and everything was doing so much better, and the PlayStation and maybe even the Wii. Everything's doing so much better is that, you know, the sales are always up. They're up on the quarter, the first quarter right now, because of maybe the China ban. You know, the, them lifting the whole ban and everything, so they're just making a ton more money. To, maybe. Well, how many people are over there right now? Three billion, yeah, maybe? three billion. Three billion people. I mean, you're talking about three billion people, so that's at least a couple billion in revenue for each major company. That's fucking great. Pretty much. I don't know, like, iPhones over here are what? I mean, with, with contract, it's like what? $300? Oh, three, $400? And that, that's the basic model. Yeah. I mean, you're not talking about like the, the five. So uh, 400 C? times three billion. Or the five C or five S. Five S is the best one right now? Yeah, so the 5S, yeah, you're talking at least a good... 400 times uh, 1 billion. 4 to 500, depending on your contract or whatever. at trillions of dollars. Yeah. They're not losing money. So anyway, uh, here's something for you guys, uh, your movie lovers and your prop collectors and all that other stuff. Jurassic Park's Velociraptor cage on sale on eBay. Um, everyone knows the Velociraptor cage in the opening scene of Jurassic Park uh, back in 1995, 98. Um, God, where the guy long. gets pulled in and gets his arm ripped off. Right. And it's it, like, shoot her! Shoot her! <laughs> well, the Velociraptor cage is on sale on eBay, and you can hold, own a piece of movie prop history, which is now basically a rust bucket. Uh, so if you got a spare $100,000 laying around, you could buy it from the 1993 film. Oh, my God. Who would drop $100,000 on a fucking... Yeah, it's the exact. It is actually the same cage that you see being brought in on the forklift and being slid into place where the guy gets ripped in. And he's like, "Shoot!" Ah! It's the exact cage that is on sale right now for on eBay for a hundred thousand dollars. No, people will be paying it. You got to think of the shipping cost on that bitch. But the thing is, <laughs> <laughs> you can, you could build one for less than a hundred thousand. Exactly, but it's not. I mean, the if original you're a metal fabricator, you can make one in no time. It's not the original movie prop, and people just love that kind of shit. It'll go to a museum somewhere. I'm sure it will. Yeah, but the thing is, a replica like is just as like not as good as the original. But the thing is, like, it's a box. It's a steel box. Yeah. It's not like it comes with a Velociraptor inside or a fucking cool Jeep from the movie. It comes with a piece of paperwork saying it was in the fucking movie for a few scenes and that was it's it. It's like, I bought this for $100,000 and all I got was this lousy box. <laughs> yep. Gotta love it. For $100,000, seriously? It's a box. Where are you going to keep it? It's apparently in your fucking yard so it can keep on rusting. Ugh, it's terrible. Apple iPhone 6 has now rumored as, uh, you know, of course it's just rumor so don't hold anything fucking... Set in stone right now, but SlashGear.com is going to say that it's going to hold a 4.8-inch display on the new iPhone 6s. Uh, is that going to be very true? I mean, how much bigger is it? Do you know this, the spec on the the 5s right now? I, I have no Six fucking and a half, idea. maybe 7 inches? No. Yeah. I mean, if this, is, if this has a bigger display at 4.8 inches, then it's got to be something like that. It's got to be... So it's probably at what three point nine or four maybe. So going back to the uh, Velociraptor cage from Jurassic Park, we just looked it up on the eBay. The details finally surface. <laughs> God, <laughs> it looks like a hunk of junk if you look at the photos. It, it really does. And for hundred K, um, Jesus, it's almost at hundred K right now. It is. I will get the official total: ninety nine thousand nine hundred dollars and ten cents. So maybe I should go bid like eleven cents. Yeah, and, and then I get you stuck. St- get stuck paying almost a hundred thousand dollars for a fucking metal cage. So I'm gonna go and read real, real, real quick the actual uh, 
title and like the actual description of the condition. This set would make an amazing restoration project. Wear and deterioration due to age in both props, Velocity Raptor is faded and missing inner mouth pieces and coming apart. Some pieces of the crate are missing, props are sold and pictured as is. So you do get the Velocity Raptor with it, but I don't know, man. If I had that much money, I don't think I would even. I don't think I would get it. Uh. It's great for people that have millions of dollars to blow, but for like people like us, a hundred thousand dollars wasn't the uh, the Han Solo DSL forty four blaster going for a hundred thousand? I think so. Yeah. Oh my god, dude! And that's like so small compared to that fucking cage. But Star Wars is actually much bigger than what the fuck are you looking up on your? <laughs> Anyways, uh, Star Wars is much bigger than Jurassic Park in my mind. Anyway, so. Oh my god. So, fair trade, porn star offering sexual favor for the best Lego creation built to decorate her house. Okay. I'm, I'm uh, guessing there's some very happy uh, Lego creators at Lego World right now building their asses off trying to get sexual favors for this, this I, chick. I guess. I wonder how many STDs so she has. So, Christy Mack, the porn star, is looking for, is offering a BJ for the best creation of the, the <laughs> creation for the built to decorate her home. Oh God! Must be eighteen years older, and really desperate for a blowjob. Apparently so. Oh my God, dude! Like I wish I could. Oh, I wish I had money to blow because I'd like build stuff right now. <laughs> so, like, hey, can I borrow some of your Legos? I that box right behind you by about five feet is full of Legos. Yeah. God, let's start building right now. Let's build like the biggest cock on the planet out of Legos. No, and maybe that will fucking get her to give me a blowjob. Come on, Steve, I need this. Come on. So you're going to show off a piece of work by a gigantic penis and send it to her. Like, that, like that's going to turn her off. <laughs> Dude, seriously, the contest art ends March 1st. We need to follow this story and see if it actually goes through. <laughs> I'll leave that up to you to follow that story. Oh, my God. My God, Nate. Oh, God, this is awesome. Samsung is reportedly working on Google Glass's competitor, I believe... This was brought up in uh, last week's podcast a little bit, but uh, Korean Times has gone out and saying that Samsung is working on its competitor, and they're hoping to launch sometime this year in 2014. They just have no date when, but they're going through, and the Department of Homeland Security is really trying to figure out that article you brought up last week about that entire... Uh, movie theater fiasco that went on. Yeah, the whole Google Glasses and the guy being accused of pirating the movie, which yeah. when they hooked it up, it had no recordings of the movie on it whatsoever, so they click a bunch of dumbasses. I wonder how many free tickets that guy got, you know? I don't know, but uh, I don't know. I'd be very pissed. I'd never go to an AMC f- theater again. Oh, I never would. I would boycott that, but I would demand a bunch of you know free movie tickets for a year or maybe in a lifetime. I don't know. So for you ladies out there, bra on class only on, with on hooks when true love is detected. So basically there's this app. So this... the bra blows off your body when <laughs> when your endorphins get to a certain point is my guess? Uh, so this bra is designed by Japanese lingerie manufacturer Ren Viju that has a front clasp that will only release when true love is detected. So it's basically like a, uh, what do they call it, chastity belt for your boobs. <laughs> a special heart rate monitor is built into the bra and will dis- and it will link to your iPhone or smartphone and it will monitor your heart while you sleep. Uh the bra comprises of a sensor that monitors your heart rate and other vitals. The data is consistently transmitted to via Bluetooth to your mobile smartphone. Processing the data will be a special app that measures the heart rate elevation using a special algorithm that preset data, and it is only when your heart has truly found that special someone that it will be in a way that the app will recognize it's wirelessly unhook the bra. So basically you can hack in and unhook a bunch of women's bras. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that's going to happen. It's like going to like a packed like... Uh, auditorium or something like that, like a geek fest, and like, ah, I've hacked into the bra signal, <laughs> and it's like, on hook, poof, bras blow off everywhere. Half the crowd just falls. <laughs> no, that sounds like uh, the that one hacker's convention. So if they were to go to the hacker's convention, <laughs> could you imagine? The League of Evil. <laughs> <laughs> could you imagine what this would happen? Oh my god, like, they have a video for it too. <laughs> Let's watch the video. <laughs> yeah, sure. And has some dude pulling on the bra. 
<laughs> Watch some dude taking a die grinder Let's to take it. Take a fucking pair of scissors and cut the straps. <laughs> How do they get funding for these projects? <laughs> Japanese people are awesome. It's coming from the same guys that came up with the handy vending machine. <laughs> Dude, this is like... This is like uh, the Million Dollar Man. We can build him faster, stronger. <laughs> Dude, it actually blows off. <laughs> Spoiler. Total cock tease. <laughs> <laughs> that in the video was just fucking hilarious. Oh my god. Well, uh, yeah. Um, Did you record all that? Yeah, yeah, of dude, course. That was awesome. But anyway, it's like, uh, dude, that, this that, thing, this weird. bra it's actually blows open. It's a I, front. It's a front hook bra. So it's not like it's the back and nothing shows. But it's like a front hook bra that's like tight, really tight, and then it's like blows apart when you get true love or like a sexual arousal. But the thing is, is like you just cut the straps off if you really want to get at it. Yeah, if you really want to, yeah, but I I don't I really don't know. It just like I said, how do they get funding for these projects? I don't understand that. I just do not understand it. Ugh. <laughs> I should really have a fart tally for how many times you shit yourself in our podcast. Seriously, someone should like rate that, make that pie chart, and find out. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> So, the old classic, dress up as a gigantic pigeon and shit on somebody's car right after a car wash prank. So, <laughs> this video on the internet is a prankster <laughs> called Remy Gillard, dressed as a gigantic pigeon and fake crapping on some dude's car right after he pulls out of the car wash. I'm surprised that the guy didn't shoot him, assuming that he didn't have a gun. <laughs> Dude, just watch this video. It's like, ugh. He's washing his car. It's nice and pretty. It's getting in his car. So what should do to Leo every time he washes his car? It's gotta be from Germany. This guy's car just got wrecked. Oh no! That is great. It's like you think you funny. This guy's in a gigantic pigeon suit, cooing. He's telling him to come down. <laughs> Dude, that was awesome. Oh my god. <laughs> this shit. Oh my god, his car is a gigantic pigeon. Oh, I'm going to post that in the cesspool for sure. That is just fucking unreal. <laughs> oh, I meant to bring this up. I saw this article earlier. What you got? But Nintendo has reached all new lows. You know how much I love Nintendo and everything else like that. Yeah. But now they are so poor and desperate for money, they're branching out into the drug industry and making their own brand of ecstasy. What? Is this a real article or is this like bullshit? <laughs> it's half bullshit, half truth. Okay. But anyway, uh, they're Nintendo branded ecstasy pills recently spotted at a Belgium club night scene. Uh, basically, oh, so like a form of Molly or ecstasy or something. Yeah, kind basically, of some, some of these druggies like they make their own Molly and their own uh, ecstasy pills. And what they did is they put the Nintendo logo on the pill itself. So nice. now Nintendo's known for getting you high and having fun. I, I have nothing to say to that. Oh, yeah. speaking of Nintendo, that I should have brought up earlier. So uh, they had a forecast on their Nintendo sales for the Wii U, they forecasted that they're going to get $9 million in this quarter, the first quarter. And they now lowered that projection to $2.8 million. I don't even think they're going to see that in total profit sales. I don't either. I don't think but it's going to happen. But I my little brother got a uh, Pokemon X and Y for his birthday. Very nice. And I got to see what it looked like on the DS. And it is they they night, look great. Night and day. They look great, comparison. don't they? It's, like, so more lifelike and real. But, uh, according to this, Jelly Belly has made their own beer-flavored jelly beans. Interesting. Just um, because they can. What kind of beer are we talking about? Is it, like, a wheat beer? Is it a stout? Is it... It doesn't say. It just It's a draft-inspired in, draft, uh, beer flavored into Jelly Belly's jelly bean lines. I'm sorry. For a beer guy, there has to be more details on this article. Uh, they do not give the name of the beer. Well, they don't have to have a name of the beer. I guess it's, it's a, beer flavored. It's not like beer. there's actual alcohol in the jelly beans. It's like, mm, I'm getting drunk off eating <laughs> jelly beans. Mm. <laughs> well, I'm just curious on what kind of a beer it's going to be. So, so there's a new world record for the longest man-made echo. It is the solid 
112 seconds long and doubled the longest I've ever made it. I've made love. <laughs> so, uh, only, um, only coming from this podcast. So yeah, it's basically a staggering 97 seconds long echo in this, uh, place i cannot it's basically acoustic scientists emerge from the inchtown oil storage tanks of underground fuel depot constructed during world war ii uh the proof that the shot the gunshot fired inside the tunnel resulted in over a full 112 seconds of echo so that's a great lung capacity person to scream for that long it was actually a gunshot. They shot. Oh, a gun. it was a gunshot. Yeah, they shot oh, a gun. Oh, okay. I thought it was like a, a guy screaming. And one of these 18-inch diameter uh, oil pipes, because there are no doors, the tank is designed to hold 25.5 million liters of fuel and has walls over 45 centimeters thick. The space is about twice the length of a football field and nine meters wide and 13.5 meters high. So they're in the World Guinness Book of Records for the longest echo. Okay. That's pretty cool. Very nice. So, Batman and Harley Quinn themed engagement ring. What was that one? We had Pokemon. Oh, uh, so the Pokemon engagement ring. I thought we had something else for an engagement ring a th- couple wasn't weeks it Zelda? back. Was it Zelda? I don't think so. I think it was something else. Anyway, I don't know the specific amount that they're going to want for this. They do not, not have it on here, but yeah, if you guys so, want to go with that, sure. More props to you. So we're ready to go into movie news? Yeah, I am ready. Let's do it. So anyway, uh, Carrie Fisher, big news for Star Wars universe. Carrie Fisher is now confirmed that she is going to be in the next Star, Star Wars film uh, trilogy. I would hope so, because they were casting for well, they already her com- daughter. Well, they confirmed uh, Luke, uh, Luke Skywalker, which is Mark Hamill, and they've already confirmed uh, Han Solo, which is Harrison Ford. Right. So uh, the only one that they have not had come out and completely like uh said was carrie fisher was carrie fisher yeah so now she has come out officially in a official capacity and said that she is going to be in the next three films so oh, the next three films I- i'm assuming it's gonna be the next three films but she could be killed off who knows but um i'm excited that's like basically the trifecta that you need to make a perfect sequel to those films to make it complete i mean we're, we have the to only person this- they're not gonna have is uh is Chewbacca. I mean, the original guy that played Chewbacca. I believe his name was... Uh, I'm sure he's got so many arthritis problems, because it wasn't an actual person. Yeah, his his knees, he was actually in a wheelchair for the longest time, because yeah. he... Uh, I mean, when, you, when you're that tall, gravity fucking hates you. And then, of course, when you're that tall, the cartilage and everything just doesn't last as long. I can't imagine... Well, it's Peter Mayhew. The guy is, like, seven foot two. And he's 69 years old. So it's like his knees are basically shot because he's so tall. I mean, he's, a, he's, not, he's not a fat guy. He's a really skinny dude. But the thing is, his knees, like, it's still a lot of weight. It's like basketball players have that problem as well. Yeah, I mean, they can't even last 15 years in the league. But the thing is, like, there's no, like, they don't believe Peter Mayhew will be able to make the franchise because of his knees. I believe he just had knee reconstruction surgery, I want to say, late last year. And that was when they uh, actually went out and put that article out saying you had to be over seven foot tall to apply for the job of being Chewbacca, Um, which is kind of sad in a way because it would have been cool to have all four original cast members to come back and do their reprising roles, but... It's understandable in Peter Mayhew's case. You know what I mean? It's, it's just, he's, he can't, he's old. He can't do it anymore. It's, I feel bad. Yeah. I mean, I feel really bad for him too, but at the same time, you got to go through and think of, you know, maybe that he can make a cameo appearance. Maybe he can be in one of the scenes or something on some kind of a uh, spacecraft or something. Cause he's in a wheelchair, of course. But what, same Chewbacca with... in a wheelchair? <laughs> no, the guy who played Chewbacca. <laughs> Chewbacca's in a wheelchair. He's in a retirement home <laughs> for Wookiees. <laughs> but same with um, James Earl Jones, the guy who voiced Darth Vader. Maybe bring him in as one of the background people, just like an extra or something, or give him one line or something. Just to be like that cool, nostalgic feel of we'll do an the homage old, to him. You know yeah, what I mean? the, the old cast members that made the movie and the series what it is today. Well, it... it, it... It'd be nice, but the thing is, I don't think they'd do it because J.J. Uh, J. Abrams is trying to do this right and make fans happy. 
Like it, it's going to be a balancing act for him. I feel sorry for him because he's a, he, he's against the loaded gun. You know what I mean? With the whole entire buyout of Lucas Arts and the tragedies of the last pre- films they made. You know what I mean? It's just, he's against the loaded gun, and he has to deal with a lot of people that are expecting a lot of him because this is a sequel. You know what I mean? This is going to be with multiple original cast members. For the next ten years, this is going to be going on. It's like, I if feel... not longer. I feel bad for him, and I hope he doesn't fuck up. You know what I mean? It's... I'm already, I'm already against him, you know what I mean? It's like, I'm, I'm not really against him, I'm just like on the fence. It's like, you better not fuck up or I'll jump all over your ass. You well, know, it's, it's just like, like the whole Michael Bay Ninja Turtle thing. Well, Michael Bay has no... He can't even fucking, like, hold a conversation at CES while talking about his own fucking films. His own film on a TV tech spec program that he should have done some research on instead of reading up a fucking teleprompter. It's That's like the shit that, that gets can't me. can't do that has no business making the freaking Ninja Turtles movie. At all. I understand he's not a writer, he's a director. But at the same time, you need to go through and you need to know your shit, especially what you're talking about. Especially at CES, in front of all those people he fucked up. And of course, it's all over YouTube making thousands and probably eh, 100,000, at least 100,000 uh, hits. So, HBO cancels Family Tree and Hello Ladies. They cancel these two comedy series within their first year. And. They didn't look very good. I I don't have a, a subscription to HBO, but from what I've seen, a few of the previews and just leading up to it, it doesn't look like it would be very funny at all. I I, I don't know. It's like uh, those are both uh, just by the names are chick flicks, aren't they? Well, or chick shows, chick, or girls situated shows. It, you know what I mean? It's just like a soap opera show, kind of. I, like, I would say it's a. So the thing opera is, like HBO, you have point. to pay for. You I mean even exactly. HBO Go, you have to pay for. You know what I mean, it's not like the thing is with uh, Game of Thrones and Dexter. You know, what I mean, they had to like no one was really into it at first, but as soon as like it started getting blown up on the internet and people were talking about it, people just flocked right to it. You know, what I mean, people paid for that service just to be just to watch it. It's like Game of Thrones is still going on, correct? Yes, they are. Yeah, I you know, mean, they're still doing really good too. It's like Dexter just finally wrapped on eight seasons. You know, what I mean, it's just. You have to build up a fan base first before you even get those kind of numbers. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm sure HBO has millions and millions of, of subscribers and watchers, but the thing is, like, to get to the point of Dexter and what, what is now Game of Thrones, it's just like, you have to have that moving power, that driving force, and those probably didn't get enough. But uh, according to this, uh, J- Jurassic World, which is the new show that's coming out, our movie, is going to be, uh, has confirmed that Chris Pratt is going to be the lead role and character details follow as well. With so many high high profile uh, ten pulls scheduled for 2015, that means casting for the big franchise installment sequels arriving next year is ramping up now. We've witnessed that recent months Marvel casting announcements for Ant Man and nearly official confirms for the Star Wars and uh, Terminator Genesis. Meanwhile. Dr- uh, projects like 20th Century Fox Fantastic Four reboot and Universal's Jurassic World are finalizing their rosters as well for the spring production shoots, uh, which is uh, going to be amazing. I cannot wait. I want to see. I wonder how they're going to take Jurassic World compared to the other three movies. You know what I mean? It's like the first one was great, second one was mediocre, third one was just terrible. All I know is that you know, 20 years from now, we're going to have a prop on sale for $100,000 on eBay. That will be falling apart, rusted piece of shit falling to pieces. But I'm sure this is something that you're very excited for, just like Jurassic World. Doctor Who has taken a look at their new 12th Doctor. Nope, not really. But look at him. He's older. So are you more shocked that he's older and not young and you know have a fucking 12-pack or whatnot for all these ladies? Yeah, but if you looked at the first Doctor, he doesn't really have any sex appeal. You know what I mean? This guy... He looks like he's good enough for the people that have the, uh, what do they call him, the gray fox uh, fucking look. The they... gray fox look? Yeah, young, younger girls like hot older guys. Like really older dudes. <laughs> <laughs> like, like ancient really looking dudes. Over, older dudes. Oh boy, that's funny. Well, um, this is great for all you James Bond fans, but Skyfall wins two Grammys this year. Did it? Yes. For music or... Oh, uh, let's see. Cinematography. All right, so, so yes. for her intro song, Skyfall. Yep, so she did win. But uh, according to this, actress Russo Dawson has confirmed to be in Kevin Smith's Clerks 3. 
You know her as the young lady that uh, slept with Dante Hicks and got impregnated by him. And he, she's going to be re- reprising her role as Dante Hicks's wife. So I wonder what I'm the budget's going to be on that. It's probably going to be around four to five million. He likes to keep it low budget and then like go out and try to market himself to try to make as much money as possible. Right now, he's got something on Hulu that's exclusive. He's got comic book men, and he's he's got a shit ton of other things. He's got Hollywood Babylon. He does all these podcasts, so he's well known right now. When he releases Clerk Three, it will not be an issue for him to sell a couple hundred million dollars worth of tickets easily. Oh my god, I just saw this article and I'm about to shit my pants. So DreamWorks producing a live-action Ghost in the Shell adaptation. Years have passed, literally, since the, anyone's talked about the re-adaptation of Matsugumi Shiro's landmark mega anime, uh, Ghost in the Shell. First conceived on the page in Shiro in 1989, brought to the big screen in 1995, and sequeled in 2004 by legendary Japanese filmmaker Maru Hushi, or Hushi, uh, the Ghost in the Shell franchise has la- largely survived television uh, property and intervening decade, as seen in early uh, uh, audits of the TV show Standalone Complex, and much recently as the OVA series arise. This makes the recent development over the new Ghost in the Shell film uh, potentially very exciting. It turns out that there will be more movement on bringing Shiro's creation back to the theaters and a new update for original work for DreamWorks. Um... That's fucking exciting as shit to have DreamWorks working on Ghost in the Shell, a anime of all things. Like, I'd fucking go see that just because it's Ghost in the Shell. It's like, I love Ghost in the Shell, and I love the standalone complex and the Laughing Man uh, series. It was just amazing. Now, how long did it go on for? Uh, God, I want to say there was the OVA, and then there was like four or five movies that they did. It was all anime, but um, there is like live action adaptations for it in Japanese shot for Japanese people like you can still find them and get English subtitles on them but the thing is they never done like a live uh adaptation like ad- it's kind of like going to be like the matrix does like CGI versus real life or uh what's another good example oh my god I I can't believe I'm blanking on this I'm just so excited about Ghost in the Shell I can't remember any of the movie history or stats but uh, that's so fucking cool. I cannot wait to show Joe Lacoon this on uh, Bonsai Beat. He'll probably shit a brick, too. <laughs> shit a brick. Yep. Love it. Dude, this is fucking awesome. But anyway, uh, according to this, first look at the giant-sized Sentinel Mark X in X-Men's Days of Futures Past. A decade ago, most movie getters are jumping back and forth between X-Men, Spider-Man, and Fantastic Four films before Marvel Studios even existed. As a self-financed production house, Marvel comic fans have eagerly waited for the chance to see the towering Sentinel robots, which everyone knows from the Shit, comic book series, yes. and the uh, cartoon series as well. I just lost my face. Sorry about that. Towering Sentinel robots from Xbox comic books appear on the screen. These latest little mechanical beasts are a nightmare of mutant kind, designing with the sole purpose of tracking and capturing and killing mutants globally. They are a frightening symbol of anti-mutant hysteria. Since the anti-mutant uh, segment has been running the theme through the entirety of X-Men franchise, it's shocking that it's taking s- seven movies to finally see them in an action screen franchise. But it is they have a point? You know, what I mean, it's seven films and they still have not shown Sentinels. You know, what I mean, that was they, the they big. Have, they haven't shown the basics of X-Men. Yeah, that that was like the whole point behind like behind like mutant hate, and then like the next big thing was the Sentinels. You know, what I mean, not including. Uh, the, uh, God, what is his name? I know his fucking name, but I'm gonna call him, like, the Virtual Dracula dude. Virtual Dracula? Like, he's like a metallic-looking Dracula. In the series right now? No, in the comic book series and in well, yeah, the cartoon in, in series. In the series, I have no idea. I can't remember his fucking name. Oh my god, sorry comic book viewers, please don't hate me. Well, this goes kind of hand-to-hand with Halo 4, how they finally bring in the Sentinels there. How they finally bring in all the... Is that the correct... Word for them, Sentinels? God, we're video game people and we can't even remember this I shit. I know. Um, well, it's only 4.30 in the morning. My mind just wrapped up in... <laughs> Prometheans. Prometheans, there we go. So. Sorry. The Prometheans were, you know, the forerunners and everything that created these Halo universes, and we only heard from them, and now we get a chance to fight them years after the fact. So wouldn't that kind of play hand-in-hand, hand, almost? Kind of, but the thing is, like, 
there's other enemies that you can go through and get along with, and or not get along with, but kill and But you always face. knew about the you knew about the Prometheans and stuff like that. You knew there's a higher power behind the Halo rings, and you knew it wasn't the Covenant because they went across stealing other uh, technologies from other races. You know well, I, mean? I guess you do make a point that they really haven't so that touched was, on the sun. That was like in the just series. more juicy story to get into. But the thing is, at the mo- at the point, it was the 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 threat wasn't the Halo rings; it was the Covenant itself. Right. And then once the Covenant was taken care of, basically, they went back into the meteor part of the story, where you got more of a history lesson on who built the Halo rings and who were the Prometheans and who was the librarian. Well, I know you touched on, of course, Sentinels not being. In there as live action, but well, they're just saying they, it, why, they, why did they it, talked about them before in the movies, correct? Yeah, they no, they haven't talked about them all. The, the first shot you get of Sentinels, like the actual like the look like the Sentinels from the, the actual cartoon series Sentinels, is uh, I want to say Last Stand, where they're in the simulation room, the danger room, and like uh, Wolverine's just going around looking like a badass, lighting his smoke off a of fucking. Uh, a burning car, and then he he has uh, the the steel guy throw him. I at guess a I don't remember this. And he cuts off the head of it, and you see the head of the sentinel. You know, I mean, that was the first time they dropped the little hint at the sentinel, but they never like beyond that they never mentioned it again. And now, finally, years later, now we're going to go through is, and get it. According to these pictures, these looks at the sentinels, they look nothing like the fucking sentinel they had in the danger room. Well, of course not. They're going to go through and bring it up to this time and what they would look like in this current situation. I don't know. It's all the technology and shit. Yeah, but the thing is, you think there'd be a progression. You know what I mean? Like, if they, if they, that's the older version of the Sentinels and this is the newer one, what happened in between? You know what I mean? I I just I don't like how the, X, the X-Men the franchise has jumped all over the fucking place. You know what I mean? It's just... Well, I, it, I, I it's love the like X-Men. It's kind of like how Spider-Man did. Spider-Man 1, 2, and 3, within those those three movies, they fucking jumped all over the place. Yeah, I know, but it's just depressing. You know what I mean? Especially for people that grew up watching X-Men and just fell in love with it. And, like, me, I own all the cartoon series on DVD. And I used to have a lot of the comic books before, like, they got destroyed or sold because my... (laughs) Before your mom went on her Christian rant. Yeah, basically. But it's just... You wish that... There'd be more of a natural story progression, like they did with the comic book series and the and the cartoon series. You know, what I mean, it's it's just all over the place. And the thing is, comic book or X Men wasn't centralized around Wolverine. You know, what I mean, it it was basically Professor X and the main four X Men. It was uh, Cyclops, uh, Storm, Jean Grey, uh, Beast. Actually, there's more than four, and then there was uh, Gambit. You know what I mean, and then uh, Rogue and Jubilee; those were the main ones in the comic book series and in the and in the car- the the cartoon series. Wolverine was a side bit character that came in now and then because he was like a rogue agent. He never really belonged anywhere. I guess right. I thought there was more than that though, like in the original series itself. But well, there was Nightcrawler, but he was like he was a originally a different uh, X Men. He, he was good at changing his like he basically can morph into anybody. No, it's just like a shape shifter. He'll change his appearance. Yeah. yeah. But then something happened. I believe it was actually the the vampire guy that changed him and mutated him more into what we know as Nightcrawler. Hmm. And then there was Beast Man. Well, good thing we're talking about comic books in uh, the movie section. Well, we, we went we went from movies <laughs> we to like the actual tangent. history of X Men. But that's X Men as I know it. You know, I mean, I could be completely wrong according to the comic book because I never read most of them. But the thing is. You'd wish you'd see more of a natural progression than just, like, jump here, jump here, jump here, and it's always got to be centered around fucking Logan and Wolverine. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, just don't, I don't get it. You know what I mean? It's like, I know he's a great, cool character, but I just think they went the wrong direction with making him, like, their whole entire driving force. Speaking of wrong directions and going through with, uh, I, I, I guess you can say ruining a series or ruining something, so... You're a fan of Breaking Bad, where you sat down, you watched a few seasons and whatnot. And I've watched them all. Okay, well, you know Mike, I, I cannot remember Michael's last name, who he was uh, Gustavo's bodyguard, the bald-headed guy, the older gentleman, who Mike. ends up dying. Yeah, the older guy, Mike, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah well, uh, his name is Jonathan Banks, you know, his real name, and he is joining Better Call Saul is going to be this spinoff series. Yeah, yeah, which is we actual, talked about this a long time ago. Exactly, yeah. that's going to be in the, the prequel. Do you think... This show, Better Call Saul, is really going to give much of an explanation, or going to last, because the main characters of the show are not going to be in it, 
I mean, what what what's your intake on this? We've talked about it before, but I don't think it's going to do that well because it's not going to have a bunch of the main characters. The story will be there that will lead up to the Breaking Bad series. Yeah, but... I, I don't think it's going to do as well as the no. the original show because the thing is, you you fell in love with the relationship between Walter and uh, his Jesse son and his wife. No, you, it's it was the relationship between Jesse and Walter. Right, exactly. You know but then I mean? his like, family was right there with him from yeah, the very but the beginning. Thing is, I don't think they developed that enough for people to care. You know, I mean, the only like relationship you cared about was Walter and uh, his brother-in-law, which was uh, Hank. Tank. You know, what I mean, that was the relationship you was always on age. It's like, oh, will he find out this week or this week or this week? You know, what I mean, that was the relationship they cultivated. But as far as like the wife goes, they didn't bring up that until like maybe the the last the se- the well, I'll season say before season the last season three or four because you know of course she got pregnant and then she really got to buy in the car wash and she got into the scheme of things. Yeah, but he she didn't find out about the the drugs and stuff like that until after she was she already had the baby. Right. You know what I mean? Because she was wondering where all this money was coming from and shit like that, and she caught on before Hank did. Yeah, paying for all of his treatments, and then Hank finally caught on the fifth season. Yeah, so too little, too late. The thing I guess. is, I think the only relationship that they cultivated that was worth it, other than Jesse and Han- Jesse and Walter, was Hank. You know what I mean? That that was the three main relationships you you were on edge every single week. You know what I mean? But the the side bit characters like Saul, like he was a really side bit like small character. You know what I mean? Like. He was his lawyer. He was there for a good comedian aspect because of his high energy, which is funny because he's actually a comedian in real life. So that's why I, I find it kind of funny how it's going to take off with a prequel on a very serious note of a story called Breaking Bad. Yeah, I, I don't know. I just think it's uh, a little weird that they're going to do that. Um, I don't. I, who knows? I could be wrong. But the thing is, I do not think they're going to... It's like if they did a spinoff adaptation of all the the people that were in Walking Dead that were there for, like, maybe one scene and you only knew their name by, it's like, oh, that's so-and-so, and that's it, and they get killed off by a walker. Right, they, I just, mean, they, they leave the group. You know what I mean? It's like, it's not going to be as interesting as the main people. You know we, what I mean? we have books on people like the governor, who, which, you know, has a huge role in the series, but... Well, the governor, he's a main main role. You exactly. Know I mean? I'm talking about but, the people but we just, don't have a prequel of him. Yeah, we do. The, the book's done by, uh... Jane the Lucena. books, the books, but not in a live action movie or live action series itself. You know, where it might be just a season long about just like him or Simone or Rick. We have a little bit of each character of how they were and what they were portrayed as before the apocalypse happened, but we don't have like a full in depth fucking two or three season blowout of oh. these small characters. We can sit here and debate this all day, but I know. Let's, uh, let's go on to uh, other little movie news. Uh, Jarrett Hedlund. Uh, is going to be playing young Captain Hook in Joe Wright's Pan. Uh, he's also know you may know him for his breakthrough role in Tron Legacy. Um, a lot of people are actually not happy about this for some reason. Like they don't think he could play a persuasive Hook. I, I think he could. I believe that I would give Johnny Depp a role in playing Hook and Peter Pan. But I, we've seen him do the fucking pirate thing for God knows how long. So maybe he's got another movie deal somewhere. I don't know. Yeah, but the, the the thing is, we were also talking about uh, Jesse from Breaking Bad. A lot of people are not happy about it. Or not happy about it, but they're kind of on the edge about it. Like, can he pull this off? Uh, Aaron Paul has met with Ron Howard about the role in Dark Tower, which, as everyone knows, is the Stephen King novel. That they're planning on making a live-action film about Ooh, it. Ooh, I don't know about that. Um, but a lot of people are thinking, it's like, can he really pull off the role in Dark Tower? You know what I mean? Because it's, it's a very specific role. Like, the movie, the book's been around for years. You know what I mean? It's, it's... It, it's a good book. Can he pull it off? Yeah, because I think he can. He played a good role, and he really showed himself as a role as a drug addict, and someone got cleaned up and fell back into it multiple times in the Breaking Bad series over the course of, like, a couple years. But putting that all into a one-and-a-half, two-hour block, that's been really tough. Yeah, it is. And it's like... I don't know. I think he could pull it off because I, I think he's a good enough actor to do it. It's just that it's going to be interesting to do it because, like, I've read the Dark Tower book series, and it's very specific. You know what I mean? It's you can picture it in your mind's eye, and people that have read these books and fell in love with Stephen King novels are going to go like, "I don't really see him as this character." 
talk about the late great Heath Ledger. People couldn't see him. I couldn't see him as the Joker. Well, I but, couldn't either because it was a really like no. That's because everyone was running off running off the high of the uh, Brokeback Mountain. No, not Brokeback Mountain. The Patriot. Uh, will you let me finish? <laughs> God damn it! Now I just lost his name. Uh, Jack Nicholson. Everyone was running off the oh, high yeah. of Jack Nicholson. Yeah, the original Joker. Joker you know what I mean? But everyone said that before. It's like, oh, Jack Nicholson could never pull off the, the, uh, the the Joe the the Romero the Caesar Romero Joker either. You know what I mean? It's like everyone says this, but then like someone just goes like, "Boof!" It's like, holy fuck, he's amazing. You know what I mean? It's like, but everyone's been proven wrong before in movies. So it's like you, it's never over until you actually see it on film. So let's go ahead and give Air Paul a bunch of drugs and see what he can do. <laughs> we already did that in Breaking Bad. Right? <laughs> yeah, right? And he played a great character. Assassin's Creed movie is supposed to begin this August, 2014. It's supposed to have the shoot release on the theaters in 2015 for the summer. But as a Google Translator reads, a film will begin roughly shortly in this month of August, or so they're hoping. It's Frodo Baggins' birthday today. Is it really? Yep. Elijah Wood turns 33. Wow. I will never look at him differently after seeing that movie, Maniac. Holy fuck. I know. It's just a little weird. Yeah, very weird. After seeing all of his roles that he's played for the multiple years and the stuff that he's done with Rooster Teeth, it is just fucking crazy. Well, I Frankenstein's in the theaters this week, was it? Or last week, wasn't it? Yes, it is. I was just going to ask if you had a chance to go see it, and it sounds like you did not, but... Well, according to to IMDb, it's only got a 5.5 out of 10. Ooh... So, uh, weekend was eight point twenty eight million, and gross was eight point eight twenty million, or eight eight point eight point two eight million, and the gross was eight point two eight million. Rotten Tomatoes they usually score theirs on a percentage, one out of a hundred. They gave it five percent. Wow. Yes. So I guess the magic of him being Two Face from the Dark Knight movies is over. It's shocking. I, I know you had really high hopes for it. Well, it's like. The thing is, monster movies have always gotten a bad rap in the theaters. You know what I mean? It takes a specific mindset and a specific person to enjoy a monster film. You know what I mean? And it's the same thing that goes for Godzilla films. I was just going to bring up Godzilla. Yeah. You know what I mean? It takes a specific person to enjoy those films. You know what I mean? It's like, granted, they're not going to make their money back. But the thing is, there's certain people out there that will love that movie to the day they die. All right, Nate, so do we have a podcast of the week for this week since we are done with movies officially? Yep, and I'm so sorry for forgetting the past two weeks, guys. Bear with me. We're trying to restructure our podcast to make it more fun and entertaining for you. And, like, we're so wiped by the end of the podcast that I always forget to bring up podcast of the week. But these people really deserve it. Who we got this week? Uh, Growing Up Geek is a tech news uh, uh, type uh, podcast where uh, the description is this. We may get older, but we never grew up. We still buy action figures, play video games, and lust after the newest shiny gadgets at all times. Uh, We are fanboys. Other times we are harsh critics. We tell it all. So go ahead and check them out. Their their podcast is very interesting. I've listened to them a couple times. Their latest podcast came out uh, the 24th of this month. Okay, so Um, it's fairly recent. It's fairly recent, so they are up to date. You know what I mean? It's not like they're... They don't release a podcast until, like, every five months. You know what I mean? So growing up geek... Go ahead and check them out. They're a fun uh, podcast. Check they're, out they're Trevor Schaefer and Jerry Mullen and friends. And let them know that EGS Productions sent you over there to uh, check out their podcast for you. It seems like they release one every week, so that's great. Yep. They're at, uh, wow, 87 episodes. Great. Good good job for them. Yep. All right, cool. This is going to wrap it up for another week at the EGS Productions office. And, uh, yeah, I am fucking wiped. Me too. I can't wait to crawl in my bed. I really want to sit down and play some Steam, but I know I I, I won't have time to because I have shit to do. <laughs> I guess they're editing this podcast. So. Yeah, i got to get up at, in a few hours to go pick up my brothers and sisters from school. It's if they even have school today. Well, because of being so cold? Yeah. All right, real quick before we end. Doesn't it seem like when we were kids we didn't have... No, we didn't. No snow days. We would have maybe like one or two, and that's if like half our school burnt down for some fucking reason. Yeah, or if it was is, a bomb threat. The thing is, uh, our winters have never been this cold. These have been record cold. This has been a record cold winter. For the last, oh, wow. How long were they saying? 30 years? Something? Yeah, since uh, the blizzard of 78. Yeah, yeah. so it's been a while. I remember we had that cold winter where we lost most of the trees in our yard once. Well, that was back everything. in 2004, 2003? 2003, probably. Yeah, yeah, it was like a gigantic ice storm that like knocked out power for like pretty much half of Michigan. 
Yeah, we were only out for three Which or four days. Again, so. <laughs> yeah, we were out for three or four days then, but now we were out for ten days this year. So I no, can't... we were no, we were out for more than that. We were out for almost two weeks. Oh, we weren't here. No, we we had power for a couple of days after. But I'm saying we didn't. We had to freeze our asses off. Well, well, in turn, we had to freeze our ass off here for yeah, this right. year. So it was fucking cold, regardless. You have a fireplace. <laughs> we do have a fireplace, and we kept that bitch on the whole fucking week that it was off. A whole week and a half. Fuck me. All right, guys. Well, please listen to our podcast every week, like how we always say. And please like us on Facebook. Check out our Facebook. Check out our Twitter. Check out our website, EverydayGamingSociety.com. EGS Productions. Yep, EGS Productions. If you want to write us some fan mail, EGS Productions at Hotmail.com. We love listening to our fan mail. Suggestions, comments. Yes, everything. Like, also, just send us feedback on our intros. If you guys like them, we'll continue doing them. If you don't like them, we'll figure out something else. Anything but dick pics. I will not take them at that email address. He loves dick pics. Just no. send them all over there. It's like, mm, That's a big ne- negatory. <laughs> anyway, I, I got guys, nothing else. <laughs> thank you for listening this week at Podcast 85, and tune in next week, and go ahead and check out our Podcast of the Week, which I just forgot the name off the top of my head, because it's like 5 in the fucking morning. Growing Up Geek? Growing Up Geek. There you go, Nate. Sorry, guys. I, I know your podcast. I've listened to it before. I just It's so fucking early in the morning, and I've been up for hours. Yeah, welcome to the club, man. Welcome to the club. All right, guys, we'll talk to everybody next week. See ya.